The story starts with a middle-aged man who was hit by a truck and taken to the hospital. The doctors couldn't save him and he heard a voice. Suddenly he realized he was reincarnated as a baby in another world. In the months that followed, he learned that his parents' names were Paul and Zenith, who were 20 years old. Meanwhile, as a baby, Rudy still possessed the consciousness of a middle-aged man. Then he learned more about his new home, and he also was a pervert. Rudy managed to learn faster than normal babies, and he often played with his maid Lilia's underwear. Then Lilia told Zenith that Rudy does indecent things. Zenith didn't believe her and said that Rudy is still a little baby. A few weeks later, Rudy learned that he was reincarnated into the Middle Ages and he missed his old computer to watch animes. Then he saw his father Paul practicing swordsmanship. Suddenly Rudy fell on his head and his mother was worried about him. Zenith checked if her baby boy was injured. Afterwards, she said that she will now heal her head with a spell. Rudy was confused and thought that his mother is insane because magic didn't exist in his previous life. Suddenly, Rudy saw magic for the first time and his head was healed. A few years passed, Rudy learned to walk and he could already speak. He tried to learn a lot every day in order to use magic as soon as possible. Then Rudy played in a chest and he found books while playing. Rudy's parents only had five books and he realized that he couldn't read the writing of the new world. Then another year passed and he learned secretly how to read. Rudy could already read most of the words and his parents thought that he didn't understand the content at all. Then Rudy tried to use one of the spells. So he tried to cast a water spell. Rudy was able to create a water ball that burst immediately. Later, he tried to cast the spell again. As a result, he concentrated and tried to visualize the water ball in his mind. So he tried to cast the spell, but Rudy was out of MP and he fainted out. After that, Rudy practiced magic every day and he was able to increase his MP by casting the water spell several times. When he was learning wordless magic, he wondered why spells even existed. Rudy thought it was pointless to recite magic formulas when wordless magic also existed. The next morning, he practiced the water ball spell. He continued to practice and hoped to gain special power through practice as an adult. In the days that followed, we see Paul training swordsmanship. Suddenly water was poured over Paul, and he wondered where the water came from. The reason for this was Rudy, because he learned how to shoot water balls. He was happy and was able to successfully master the water ball spell. After mastering a beginner spell, he wanted to cast an advanced spell. He then recited the words of the advanced spell and water was collected around him. Rudy was shocked and shot a huge water ball that destroyed his home. His parents immediately ran to Rudy and they were worried. His father was confused, but his mother understood that Rudy had cast a spell. His mother was delighted with Rudy's talent and wanted to hire a magic teacher for Rudy. Paul refused. Suddenly, Maid Lilia suggested they should teach Rudy both. In the days that followed, a home tutor was appointed for Rudy to teach him magic. Rudy imagined his new home tutor as an old man, but his new teacher was a teenage girl. Then Roxy found out that Rudy would be her student. She thought that Paul and Zenith were stupid because she should teach magic to a little kid. Zenith heard everything and she explained to Roxy that Rudy is a genius. After that, the basics of magic were explained to Rudy, but he already has the knowledge of the basics followed, they wanted to recite the incantation and Rudy found it unnecessary because he could use wordless magic. After that, Rudy wanted to cast the water ball spell too, but he was distracted by Roxy's panties. He missed his water ball spell and Roxy noticed that Rudy hadn't completed the spell. However, Roxy learned he is able to use wordless magic and she was shocked. Later, Zenith noticed about her damaged tree and Roxy was admonished. Roxy was depressed and thought she was going to be fired. As a result, Rudy cheered her up, but he was looking like a pervert because he was an otaku. Somehow, Rudy managed to cheer Roxy up. Suddenly, Rudy's mother showed up and she wanted to invite Roxy to dinner to get to know her better. In the evening, they ate together and Roxy was happy about having dinner with Rudy's family. Rudy was also happy for being reborn. In the following days, we see Rudy's old life and he was beaten up by debt collectors because he had no money. Then he saw three students and a truck almost ran them over. When Rudy tried to save the students in his old life, he woke up from his nightmare. He realized he had fallen asleep because he didn't have MP left. After his nap, he heard his parents moaning and he wanted to go teasing his parents. Suddenly Rudy saw Roxy, who was horny by hearing the moans of his parents. Then half a year passed since Roxy became his home tutor. In the evening, Rudy was always taught the theory of magic and he always tried to see Roxy's panties. Roxy knew Rudy was a pervert and she admonished him. Roxy explained to Rudy that she is a demon 
and that's why Rudy's parents were surprised on the first day. Followed Rudy learned that 500 years ago a war broke out and the demons called Speld were the strongest of them. The Speld race was banished to a demon continent, and many evil rumors existed about them. As a result, Roxy ordered Rudy to stay away from the Speld demons. Then Roxy explained that sometimes her hair looks green because of the glare of the light. Rudy thought that he got infinite riz because he played many dating sim games. Later Rudy tried to see Roxy while changing her clothes, but she noticed him immediately. After another six months, Rudy learned to master advanced magic perfectly. He also continued to train with his father in swordsmanship. Unfortunately, Rudy was only gifted in magic, and he lacked a talent for swordsmanship. A few days later, Roxy helped the other villagers water the wheat. Rudy watched the other children playing outside, but he was afraid of other people. The reason was, Rudy was always bullied in his old life. Then Roxy saw the depressed Rudy and asked what's going on, but Rudy didn't want to worry her. After that, they looked at the beautiful view of the village. Roxy told him more about the world beyond the mountains of his village. Then Roxy suggested him to find a magic school to become a great mage. Rudy didn't want to show his fears and said he is satisfied with the teaching skills of Roxy. She became very sad because she knew Rudy would one day surpass her in talent. After a year they celebrated Rudy's birthday and Paul gave his son a sword. He was aware that Rudy is still too young for a real sword, but Paul wished that Rudy become a strong and nice warrior. Next, Rudy received a magical grimoire from his mother, and he was delighted with her gift. Finally, Roxy gave him a wand to increase his magic power. He thanked Roxy and was happy about his new wand. Suddenly Roxy got sad because Rudy had his final exam the next day. Rudy was afraid to go outside of his home. Then he remembered his old life. He was always bullied by the other students and wished to get some superpower to change his life. Besides, he was afraid to go outside and the other students didn't stop of bullying him. Unfortunately, he hid in his room until he was a middle-aged man. The next day, Rudy had his last day with Roxy and he was afraid to go outside. Roxy thought Rudy was afraid of horses and she rode with him together. Rudy was afraid to leave his home because of the bad memories. When Rudy left his home for the first time, he was nervous. Then he realized that they weren't all staring at him. They all were staring at Roxy. The reason was all of the villagers knew Roxy and they all greeted her politely. As a result, Rudy was able to overcome his fear to go outside and he got to know the beautiful nature. After that, Rudy's last final exam started and Roxy wanted to use a sacred level water magic. She was only able to cast the spell once and Rudy should learn to use it too. Then Roxy started reciting the spell and she caused a strong thunderstorm. Suddenly it started to rain and the thunderstorm got stronger. As Roxy concentrated the magic, their horse Caravaggio was struck by lightning. Roxy immediately stopped the spell and she instantly healed Caravaggio. Roxy apologized and she wanted to see Rudy use the spell. Then Rudy took out his wand and Roxy protected Caravaggio. So Rudy started to cast the strong water magic and he also created a storm cloud. While casting the spell, Rudy was sad because he had to say goodbye to Roxy after the final test. Followed he wanted to show Roxy how much he learned and he was able to cast the spell successfully. Later on, Roxy praised him for conjuring up an even more powerful spell than herself. After that, Roxy congratulated her student and he was appointed to a sacred level water mage. In the evening, Paul and Zenith wanted Roxy to stay with them, but Roxy turned down the offer. She wanted to learn more about magic and Rudy's parents accepted her decision. Then Roxy said goodbye to Rudy and he received a necklace as a present. She said the pendant is a lucky charm. Roxy then said goodbye to Rudy's family and they were all sad. Rudy ran after her and thanked her for teaching him so much. In the days that followed, Rudy looked for panties that he had been stolen from Roxy. Meanwhile, his parents were fooling around in the garden outside their home. Then Rudy showed up and he asked for permission to play outside. His parents were happy that he decided for the first time to play outside. Then Paul told his son to be nice to neighbor's kids. After that, Rudy went to play outside and his parents wished him a lot of fun. Later, Rudy was exploring a forest and he heard boys' voices who called someone a demon. Suddenly, someone wanted to throw a stone against the bullied kid. Rudy immediately ran and stopped the bad boy with a water ball. They were angry at Rudy and tried to attack him with mud balls. Rudy was superior to them and he was able to beat them away with his water ball spells. After that, Rudy saw a person shaking and he was impressed that the bullied boy looked so cute. Rudy wanted to help him and clean him up with his water ball spell. The boy thought that Rudy was trying to bully him, but he realized that Rudy didn't mention to harm him. 
Then Rudy checked whether the person is a spell demon. So Rudy was relieved that the little boy wasn't a spell demon and he noticed the ears. Later Rudy found out that the boy is a half-elf, but neither of his parents had green hair. Suddenly the boy cried and Rudy tried to cheer him up. Then the bullied kid asked why Rudy has helped him. Rudy replied, because he want to help the weaker ones and offered him to be his new friend. Then Rudy introduced himself and he found out that the boy's name was Sylph. In the afternoon they played together and Rudy found out that Sylph had never met a nice friend in his life. After that, Sylph asked if Rudy could teach him to use the water ball spell. So Rudy decided to teach his new friend some magic spells. In the evening, Rudy said goodbye and he went home late. Paul was waiting for him and was furious against his son Rudy for a reason. Rudy was then accused of beating up a boy of the neighbors. Rudy wanted to explain to Paul that there was a misunderstanding, but he wasn't listening. Rudy became angry too, and he was very rebellious towards his father. As a result, Rudy was slapped by his beloved father, and he was lying on the ground. So Rudy was disappointed in his father's behavior because he didn't trust him. Then Paul got sad, and he found out about the story that his son had protected someone who was bullied. He apologized to Rudy, and they had their first family argument. His father then wondered why he had argued with his son. Paul could only think of the injured boy next door, and he was afraid that Rudy would turn evil, because he can already use high-level magic with his young age. During the night, Paul was still ashamed of his behavior towards Rudy, and he was afraid that Rudy didn't love him anymore. Followed the next summer started and Rudy was training his sword art. Also in the six months, Sylph managed to learn strong spells. Sylph learned quickly and she noticed that Rudy wasn't reciting the spells. Then Sylph asked Rudy to teach him wordless magic too. As a result, Rudy tried to teach Sylph and Sylph immediately managed to learn how to use wordless magic. So Sylph tried to figure out how Rudy cast wordless magic and she failed. Rudy didn't believe in Sylph because he also got trouble with casting wordless magic. But Sylph managed to learn wordless magic without any problems. Later the two played together in the farming fields. However, Rudy realized how pretty Sylph is, and he was jealous of Sylph's looks. Suddenly it started to rain, and Sylph was invited to Rudy's home. Maid Lilia had already run the water in the bathroom, and she noticed that Sylph is a girl. Then Rudy wanted to go bathing with Sylph. He wondered why Sylph didn't want to undress himself. Then Rudy just stripped Sylph her clothes down, and Rudy didn't understand why she didn't want to take off her panties. Rudy took off her panties by force, and he realized that Sylph is a girl. After that, Paul was bathing with his beloved son and he tried to cheer him up. Rudy felt guilty because he knew that his behavior was wrong. Following this, Rudy was on his way to apologize for his rude behavior. He said he was sorry for thinking of her as a boy and she started crying even more. Paul was shocked how stupid his son is because he totally screwed his apology up. The next morning, Rudy trained with his father and he lost immediately. Paul noticed his son have some problems with girls. So Paul gave his son some advice about women. As a result, Rudy understood what he had done wrong, and his father was able to successfully encourage him. Suddenly, Sylphie visited them, and Rudy tried to follow his father's advice, but he acted very creepy. So he just tried to be honest with Sylphie, and he said that he misses to play with Sylphie. She accepted the apology and wanted to play with Rudy again. Meanwhile, Rudy was happy to have a cute girl as a childhood friend. They got along again and were able to have a good time laughing together. A few weeks later, Rudy found out that Zenith is pregnant again, and the whole family was happy. In the afternoon at lunch, Maid Lilia suddenly told them she was pregnant too, and Paul was shocked by the news. So Paul apologized for cheating on Zenith with Maid Lilia. In the evening, Zenith cried and couldn't believe that Paul had betrayed her with Maid Lilia. Then Zenith asked Lilia about her plan, and she replied, she will stay and help her with give birth. After that she want to travel home, but Zenith knew she wouldn't survive with her baby. Zenith didn't know what she should do now. Rudy was hearing everything and he already considered Maid Lilia as part of his family. Then Rudy tried to put all the blame on his father, and his mother believed Rudy. But Maid Lilia said he was innocent. After that, Rudy tried to convince his mother to keep Lilia as their maid. Zenith was still sad, and she accepted Rudy's decision to let Lilia stay in her house. So Zenith told Lilia that she is now part of her family. Also, Zenith wanted to scold Paul for cheating on her. Meanwhile, Lilia was grateful about the help of Rudy. The next morning, Paul vented his anger on Rudy, and Lilia wondered why Rudy had helped her. Then we see how the problem started, because Lilia was very horny every night. The reason was Paul and Zenith moaned every night, and she needed some contacts with men too. Then we see Rudy as a baby, and he was playing every day with Lilia's panties. She found him very creepy in the past. 
she always saw Rudy as a pervert, but since yesterday, made Lilia regarded him as a saint who saved her baby's life. A year later, Rudy's new siblings were born, and Paul played with them every day. Suddenly, the two girls started crying, and the mothers immediately took care of them. Rudy watched the parents babysitting, and he wanted to be a really cool big brother. Since the birth of his siblings, Rudy got to know Lilia better. Also, he learned that Lilia and Paul had known each other since childhood. Then Rudy was called to sword training. He knew his father was a Rizzler, but he still respected his father because he is very strong. Then Rudy tried to attack him with magic, but his father had observation hockey and was able to dodge Rudy's attack. As a result, Rudy lost and his father made fun of him, so Rudy teased his father. Suddenly Paul asked if his mother would be angry if he now sleeps with Lilia. Rudy said he shouldn't do it, but Rudy was a man too, and he understood his father. He knew his father was scum, but he liked him very much. Suddenly Paul asked if he wanted to go to school someday. Paul said he didn't enjoy school anyway, because there were only nobles. Rudy found out that noble girls don't do sports, and they become very fat in the future. Then Paul advised his son that he should only try to focus on one girl. Later on, Rudy realized that Sylphie will soon overtake him with her knowledge of magic. Suddenly, Sylphie noticed that he was thinking about something the whole time. Rudy said that he would like to go to school, but Sylphie became sad. She didn't want Rudy to leave her and started to cry. Rudy cheered her up, and he had no intention of leaving her. In the evening, he already dreamed of marrying Sylphie to have a lot of fun with her. Suddenly, his father appeared, and he had a letter for Rudy. Roxy told him that she had a new student, who was very similar to him. Her new student was also a pervert, and often stole her panties. Roxy was often groped by him, and she punished him. She also suggested Rudy to go to the Renoa Magic School to learn more about magic. Paul was impressed with Roxy as she became a Water King class mage. Then he asked Rudy if he had really stolen Roxy's panties. That night, Rudy thought about Roxy's words about going to a magic academy. The next morning, he had breakfast with his family and he asked his father a favor. Paul was surprised that Rudy was planning to go to Renoa Magic School. Then he asked his father if he could go to magic school with Sylphie. He asked his father to pay the fees for the two, but he refused. The reason was that Rudy's family didn't even have enough money to pay the school fees for one person. Then Rudy asked him to find a job so that he could also pay Sylphie's school fees. Paul wanted to help his son and supported him with his idea. The next day, a female beastman showed up. Rudy was impressed by beastman Jelaine's sexy body. Then Zenith greeted her old adventurer friend Jelaine. She met baby girl Nora and said that luckily she doesn't look like Paul. Suddenly Zenith and Lilia said goodbye to Rudy and Paul explained the circumstances to him. As a result, Paul started fighting against his son and Rudy tried to defeat him with magic. Paul was very talented with the sword and he was able to corner his son. In the fight, Paul showed his true strength he wanted to show Rudy that he lacked strength. However, Rudy was knocked out and woke up in a carriage. Then he met Jelaine and he was confused. He didn't know why he rode in a carriage with her. Followed we see that Rudy wanted to know the reason why he was driving with Jelaine in the carriage. Suddenly, Jelaine threw to him a letter from his father and asked him to read it out loud. In the letter was written that Paul first made fun of Jelaine, calling her a gorilla. Jelaine got angry, but Rudy managed to calm her down and said he was only joking then Rudy found out that his job is to teach magic to a noble girl. After that, Rudy also found out that his father had seduced Jelaine before and also told Rudy that she is a master of sword fighting. Suddenly Rudy found out he would be separated from Sylphie for a while and he was angry with his father's decision. The next day he arrived at City of Roa and he was surprised about all the maids were beast men. Followed Rudy was served grape juice and he thanked the servant. So he drank the prime tropical juice and the house owner showed up. Rudy introduced himself and he learned the manners of the nobility. Then Philip told him he is the cousin of his father, and Philip noticed Rudy didn't know much about his task. However, Rudy was praised for being a strong mage and Philip hoped he is able to teach his daughter magic. Also, he warned about his daughter behave. Philip said his daughter doesn't like meeting new people. When Rudy entered Eris's room, he was immediately nervous about her arrogant appearance. He introduced himself to Eris, but she immediately started nagging him because he's two years younger. Rudy was immediately slapped by her and he got angry. So Rudy decided to slap her back and made her angry. Suddenly, Eris hit him in the face with a powerful punch and she turned into a wild animal. She was beating up Rudy, but he managed to escape by using wind magic. Then Rudy was scared and couldn't believe that his father sent him to a psycho girl who tried to kill him. 
In the evening, Philip laughed and asked Rudy if he wanted to give up his job. Rudy said he won't give up because otherwise his father will laugh at him. Then Rudy found out none of the previous teachers wanted to teach Eris. Rudy considered to beat her up with magic. He knew how dangerous Eris was and tried to find another solution. So he had the idea to arouse Eris's interest in magic. During the night, Rudy was tied up and he wanted to show Eris that magic is very useful. Rudy explained to her they had been kidnapped and that she could easily burn the bonds with fire magic. Meanwhile, Eris was angry and she complained. Suddenly an evil man appeared and Rudy was impressed by the staging. The man was angry with Eris and he kicks her against the wall. Followed Eris tried to hit the man, but he dodged all the attacks and stamped her head into the ground. Rudy shocked and he didn't know what was happening. Suddenly Rudy was also hit and he still thought that everything was staged. Afterwards, Eris cried and she lay on the ground badly injured. Rudy wanted to help her and he used healing magic to heal some of her injuries. However, two criminals discussed whether to kill Eris. Then Rudy realized that they were kidnapped by real criminals and he could just kill them with magic. He decided against the idea because he didn't want to teach Eris the wrong value of magic. Eris was still injured and couldn't escape without help. The men then tried to enter the room, but Rudy blocked the door with earth magic. Eris was desperate and she didn't want to be left alone. Time was pressing and she promised not to cause any trouble for Rudy. Suddenly, the bandits noticed that the children fled the room. Meanwhile, Rudy healed Eris completely and she was able to move again. After that, they drove home and Eris thought the criminals are hunting them. When they arrived in the city of Roa, Rudy was happy that Eris learned how useful magic is. Then Rudy saw the servants of Eris, her father, and they ran towards him. Suddenly, Eris was kidnapped again, and Rudy immediately pursued the kidnappers. Rudy used powerful earth magic to block their path. The bandit then planned to kill Eris with a sword. Rudy wanted to attack the bandits with a fire spell. Philip's servant wanted to stop him and made him an offer. Rudy got a deal, which allowed him to get enough money for his school fees. Then Rudy said that the offer sounds very good, and he learned that the servant hated Eris. The bandits thought Rudy was making a deal with him, but he refused. So Rudy shot his fire magic in the air and caused a firework. Eris was surprised by Rudy's decision to save her. Then Rudy charged at the enemies and he attacked his enemies with earth magic. So he was able to free Eris from the criminals. The criminals were able to fend off his attack and tried to kill Rudy. When Rudy was able to pin an enemy to the ground, he was confident he could win with his fire magic. Suddenly a sword flew at him and he knew he couldn't dodge the enemy's attack. At the last moment, Jelaine destroyed the sword and she began her attack against the opponents. The criminals didn't stand a chance against her and were immediately slashed by Jelaine. After that, Jelaine caught the servant of Philip's family and he was scared by seeing the Queen of Swords. Later, Philip's servant was caught and they returned to Eris Manor. Jelaine immediately pointed out that his servant was the culprit. Philip immediately ordered Jelaine to take care of the criminal. Meanwhile, Eris was angry and horrified by the bad memories of the incident. Rudy understood that his plan had failed. Rudy gave up and wanted to go home to his parents. Suddenly, Eris stopped him and she allowed Rudy to call her by her first name. She also wanted Rudy to stay in their home. So they went home and Rudy was very happy. The next day, the next Philip praised Rudy for saving Eris and Rudy found out that he is a noble too. In addition, he should say that Ghislaine has taken care of the case. After that, Hilda showed up and she met Paul's son. Rudy introduced himself and immediately stared at Hilda's large breasts. Suddenly, Philip's father showed up and he wanted to get to know Rudy. He was surprised that Rudy had good manners unlike his father. Afterwards, Saros wanted to hear the story of how he saved Eris, but Rudy lied and told him Ghislaine saved Eris. Then Saros learned that his son was to blame for the lie. As a result, Philip was beaten up by his father because he wanted to give Rudy more credit. In addition, Rudy understood why Eris is so powerful, because her grandpa was a beast too. Suddenly Eris was called to them, so Eris immediately appeared, and Sauros politely ordered his niece to ask Rudy for magic lessons. She listened to her grandfather's words and tried to ask Rudy for a favor. Rudy was confused, but Sauros was proud of his niece. Then Rudy learned, Sauros has a penchant for beastmen, and that's why Eris made such a funny pose. The next morning, Rudy had sword training with Eris, and they were taught by Swordmaster Jelaine. Then in the afternoon, Eris and Jelaine were taught magic together, and Eris had a lot of fun. Followed many days passed, and Rudy taught Jelaine math and reading. Meanwhile, Eris was messing around and she caused a huge problem with a fire spell. 
Rudy immediately put out the fire and wanted to teach her math, but Eris ran away. Then Rudy looked for Eris to teach her reading and writing. Ever since Rudy became her home tutor, she tried to escape him every day when she needed to practice reading and writing. Rudy tried to wake her up, but she didn't woke up. She didn't wake up, and he had another idea. Rudy wanted to steal her panties to wake her up. Suddenly Eris woke up, and she noticed Rudy wanted to steal her panties. So she immediately beaten Rudy up and he learned not to mess with Eris. Later, Rudy cried in front of Jelaine and hoped she will find a solution to get Eris motivated for studying. As a result, Eris studied diligently, but quickly lost interest in learning. Following Jelaine told her a story about her life as adventurous. She was able to get the attention of Eris with her story. Then Jelaine explained that after Rudy's parents got married and left the group, she always had problems with money because she couldn't count. One day, she didn't even have money left for food, and she ate excrement from a monster. Rudy was shocked, and Jelaine wanted to learn math because of this reason. As a result, Eris was motivated to continue learning. In the afternoon, Rudy trained with Eris' swordsmanship, and Jelaine tried to give them advice to improve their skills. Rudy couldn't defend her attacks. Following this, Eris used all her power, and she beat Rudy with her wooden sword. After sparring, Eris said he should train more. After that, Jelaine noticed that Rudy often shied away from enemy attacks. He replied that he was scared and was slapped by Eris. Eris said that she looks down on him for these reasons. Then Eris wanted to keep training with Rudy to make him stronger. In the evening, Rudy wanted to go to bed immediately, but he still had to prepare for tomorrow's lessons. Then he wondered what Sylphie was doing at the moment. The next day, Rudy taught Eris reading and writing, but she was acting weird. He forgot to schedule a break in his class, and she got angry. A few days later, Eris wanted to go into town, and Rudy hoped that she wouldn't be kidnapped again so that Jelaine would have to rescue her. Then Rudy complimented her cute outfit, but she hit him on the head. However, they were in the city to have fun. Suddenly Rudy was approached by a man, and he wanted to sell him something valuable. The seller showed Rudy a magic potion, which allowed him to seduce all women. Unfortunately, Eris interrupted him, and he couldn't buy the love potion. Then Rudy explained to her that he compares the prices of the items to make money with dropshipping. Eris knew nothing about e-commerce, but Ghislaine would have made a good businesswoman. Then Eris tried to prove that she is also a businesswoman, but Rudy knew she had no idea about money calculations. Later, Rudy looked at the prices of books, and Eris offered to buy him the books with the money of her grandfather. Rudy noticed Eris had no understanding of money. So Rudy taught her the lesson of rich dad, poor dad, and she understood the value of money. Also, Rudy understood she just wanted to be nice. So he wanted to teach her even more about money. She was happy and blushed. After that, Rudy saw a floating fortress in the sky. Rudy learned the Perugius fortress had defeated the demon god Laplace. Suddenly, Rudy remembered. He had heard the story from the book his parents had read to him. Rudy was surprised by the story and wanted to learn more about the floating sky fortress. The next day, Eris had a lot of fun studying and she bought Rudy a present. He got a love potions as gift and was shocked. Rudy was nervous and didn't want to tell Eris that she bought him a love potion. When Rudy wanted to leave, Jelaine stopped him. Rudy unintentionally dropped his potion and called the potion by the name. Then Rudy tried to run away, but he was caught immediately. Eris tickled him to learn more about the love potion and he was punished. In the followed months, Eris trained with Jelaine's sword fighting in the end, Jelaine praised her student and told Eris that she could reach advanced rank soon. After that, Rudy taught them how to make money with bitcoins and also taught them to cast strong magic spells. So they learned a lot by Rudy and were happy. Followed we see Rudy he was finished with to create a Roxy Barbie edition. Suddenly Maid Edna wanted to ask him for a favor. So Rudy learned Eris will be 10 years old soon. The main event of that party will be a dance performed by Eris. Rudy lacked by the thoughts about Eris dancing. Then she told him she is worried because Eris can't dance. As a result, Rudy was asked for teaching Eris some dancing moves. He accepted and was ready to teach Eris dancing moves. On the next day, Rudy discovered a book, which was written in Beast God language. Philip told him Beast God language is the best language for flirting with beast men. Rudy knew their charm of the cute female beast people, and he loved their fluffy ears. So Philip was proud of Rudy and knew they were blood related. Followed Rudy decided to learn the beast god language, and he wrote a letter for Roxy. Several in the days passed day. and Rudy had problems by learning the demon god language. 
Suddenly he heard the voice of Eris, and he learned Eris got problems to learn the dancing moves. Maid Edna was worried, and she wanted Rudy to convince her for going to her dancing lessons. So Rudy find Eris and asked about her problems, but she kicked him in the face. Followed, he tried to convince her for going back, but she didn't want to learn dancing. Rudy understand her feelings, because he was in his old life a loser. Suddenly she admitted to admires him, because he could do everything with ease. He replied he wasn't able to do everything perfect, so he tried to study to master everything. Followed he was able to cheer Eris up, and she went back to her dance lessons. Following this, they both danced, but Eris danced like a gorilla, so Rudy was injured by dancing with Eris. Later he studied beast god language and Jelaine helped him with his studying, so Rudy was able to learn a lot, and Eris also went to the dancing lessons. Also Rudy sold his created Barbie on a merchant, and he got a gold coin. In the followed days he danced with Eris and she was able to learn the noble dance moves. In the evening Rudy was exhausted for studying every day. Suddenly his Amazon package was delivered because he was a prime member. Followed he got a letter from Roxy, and she thanked him for writing her every day. Then we see Roxy. She got a new student who was a pervert too. He grabbed her breasts and she burned him down with a strong fire spell. Then she wanted to help Rudy learning the demon god language, so she gave him some advice for studying. Following this, her student showed Roxy a Barbie, which looks like her. So Rudy was surprised that Roxy's new student bought his self-made Barbie. Following this, he discovered her advices and was motivated to study more. On the next day, he was dancing with Eris again, but she had trouble like always. Maid Edna lied to her and told her she is ready for the event tomorrow. But Rudy was worried, because he knew Maid Edna lied to Eris. Then, we see the event of Eris and the nobles were served expensive dishes. Rudy enjoyed the tasty food and he saw Eris in a beautiful dress. Sauros welcomed the nobles and introduced them to his niece Eris. So every one of the nobles congratulated her for becoming ten years old. Suddenly Sauros led the main event and he said, If someone wants his favor, he should take his granddaughter's hand. So they both started to dance together, but the boy wasn't a good match for Eris. Followed, they started to dance very good, but Eris unintentionally increased the speed. As a result, she tripped and Rudy was worried. Followed, she wanted to continue her dance, but everyone looked down on Eris. Edna and Rudy were worried, because she ruined her family's reputation. Then Rudy asked her for a dance, because he didn't want to let her down. The nobles were angry and whispered behind their back. Followed, Rudy started the dance with Eris, but she was nervous and tripped again. Rudy learned she was nervous for screwing up the dance, so Rudy didn't give up and found a solution for the problem. He got the idea to use his plus ultra dancing skills, and they were able to perform a beautiful dance. As a result, Rudy was rising the whole noble main event and made Eris blush. Everyone were impressed of their performance, and Sauros was also proud of them both. After that, Edna asked Rudy about his secret, so he explained Eris got plus ultra by training with Jelaine. Because of this reason, he could manage to dance with Eris. Suddenly, three girls tried to seduce the Isekai Riz Master. Then Philip gave him the advice to use protection for having fun with the girls. In the evening, he wanted to gift his students some wands. Followed, Jelaine was very grateful for the magic wand of Rudy. After that, Eris also got a wand, and she thanked Rudy for his gift. Suddenly, Eris looked at Jelaine. Rudy said, she also expects to receive a gift from Jelaine as her student. Eris was very happy about the ring and she keep it as a treasure. The next day Rudy woke up and he discovered Eris in his bed. So he got the idea, to tease her a bit, but he immediately changed his mind. Followed he was outside and he saw something suspicious. Then he heard some voices of a moaning woman. Sauros sensed Rudy and he had a lot of fun with a female maid. Sauros wanted to show him something in the sky. He didn't know what the floating thing was and he started praying. Following this, two years passed. Rudy managed to learn new languages and had a lot of fun. Then he watched Eris by her sword training and she reached the advanced rank in sword god style. Suddenly he discovered the floating thing in the sky was changing his size. However Rudy wanted to go outside and he saw Eris with a maid. He was curious why they were talking behind his back. Suddenly he learned Eris wanted to prepare a party for Rudy's 10th birthday. Then Rudy was deep in thought. He knew he wasn't born in the main family. As a result, Rudy didn't get a big event like Eris. Suddenly we saw the mom of Eris, and she looked like having a bad mood every time she saw Rudy. Then the maids prepared the birthday party for Rudy. Jelaine tried to distract him because the maids asked for more time. Rudy wanted to have a snack, but his birthday party wasn't prepared. He immediately understand that they were preparing his birthday party. Followed, he showed a Barbie, which looked like his swordmaster. 
he purposely forget to create her tail and wanted to see Jelaine's booty. Then she pulled her pants down, and Rudy shocked by seeing her thong. She was ready for the Arnold's Physic Bodybuilder competition. Suddenly a maid appeared and saw Rudy playing with Jelaine's butt cheeks. After that, they celebrated Rudy for becoming 10 years old, and he was surprised. Eris presented him with flowers, and he started to cry. The reason is he thought on the beginning they didn't like him, but everyone was so nice to him. So Sauros said he will punish the main family. Rudy's behave was staged, and Eris tried to cheer him up with a big surprise. He thought he will be reunited with his family, but they couldn't make it. So Eris' mother tried to cheer him up, and he learned that she also loves him. Suddenly she asked Rudy to become Eris' future husband. She was also a troublemaker and they tried to stop her nonsense too. Following this, Eris got the gift for Rudy. He learned Eris bought him an off-white wand, which was used by the strongest mages. He was surprised and grateful for the gift of Eris. After that, they celebrated the birthday party of Rudy together. He enjoyed the birthday party, and everyone of Eris' family congratulated him for becoming 10 years old. In the night, Philip told Rudy that Eris had two brothers. So he learned all sons with the Borea's blood were raised in the head of the family's household. As a result, he learned why Hilda hated him first, because he was allowed to stay in their mansion, but her own sons were taken away. Followed Philip asked Rudy if he want to marry Eris. Rudy thought it was a joke, but Philip wasn't joking. Suddenly he offered Rudy to pop the cherries of his daughter and became the next head of the main family. Rudy didn't want to involved in the family problems and they rejected the offer of Philip. Then Rudy was on his way to his bedroom and he immediately regretted to reject the offer. Arrived in his bedroom, he was shocked to see Eris who was waiting for Rudy. Eris replied, she thought he is lonely and she wanted to sleep with him tonight. Rudy got Isekai Riz and had naughty thoughts. Suddenly he started to shot his load and started to kiss Eris. But he just imagined everything and realized he didn't start it. However, he couldn't withstand because he was just a man who wanted to get some love. Eris was nervous and she had an experience with men. Followed Rudy started to kiss and touch her. She could sense Rudy's Riz aura and waited for having fun. Suddenly he touched her and she rejected him. Rudy was beaten up by Eris' gorilla power and he was fainted out. After that he was deep in thought and he didn't know what he did wrong. So he thought he misunderstood the signals of her. Also he thought she just wanted to be nice to him. Then he wanted to apologize to Eris, but she wasn't angry at him. She accepted his apology and she told him, she aren't ready for making babies now. And she told him he can try it again after became 15 years old. So Rudy was happy, because she wasn't angry at him. Also he celebrated his victory, because he was allowed to pop her cherry if he turned 15 years old. He was motivated, but he remembered about his promise with his childhood friend Sylphie. Followed we see Sylphie visiting Rudy's family, and she always played with his little sisters. Sylphie wanted send Rudy a necklace of his family and she asked about Lilia's gift for Rudy. Then Aisha wanted to play with Sylphie and she was very happy for being praised. Zenith and Lilia were happy to see Sylphie acting like a big sister for the two girls. Also they were glad that she could stop the bullies of their town without Rudy's help. Later Zenith scared her little daughter and Nora began to cry. Then Paul arrived home and he saw with his family the storm clouds. In the meantime, Roxy was exhausted for teaching her creepy student. Then she also looked to the sky and saw the storm clouds. After that we see a mysterious guy, who was on a mountain. Suddenly he was attacked by a huge dragon with his breath of fire. The mysterious guy was unharmed and demonstrated his power. He just looking in the eyes of the dragon, and he could scared him. Suddenly he was surprised about the storm clouds. Another person also discovered the storm clouds, caused by an absurd amount of mana. She was Kishirika, and called himself the Great Emperor of the Demon World. Then we see the palace of Laplace, and he sent a servant to eliminate the danger. However, Rudy was outside with his friends and he wanted to test his new wand. Then he started to cast his strongest spell, but he stopped. Suddenly Jelaine used her green Rinnegan eye, and she saw an attack coming. Followed they were attacked, and Jelaine tried to protect her students. Suddenly she was fighting against one of Lord's Perugia's servant. Then they could clear the misunderstanding, and Rudy was confused. He was deep in thought, but the weird thing in the sky disappeared. Suddenly the floating thing exploded, and Jelaine tried to protect them, but she didn't manage to reach them, so Rudy wanted to run away, but went back to protect Eris. Followed, Rudy was in his old body again, and he met the man-god. Suddenly the man-god explained he just had this fat body, because this is his mental body. Man-god wanted to give him some advice, but Rudy refused, because he was scared for being tricked. 
Rudy was confused and he learned that the massive mana disaster transported him to the demon continent. Following this, he wanted to hear the advice of Mangod. As a result, he got the information, when he awake, he will met a man, and they should help each other. After that, Rudy woke up and he was happy to be alive. Then he saw Eris sleeping and wondered, where Jelaine is? Suddenly he saw a spelled demon with a scary face. Rudy was shocked, because everybody told them to flee by seeing a spelled demon. So he was ready to cast a strong spell, but he noticed the spelled demon didn't want to hurt him. Suddenly Rudy used his demon god language to greet him, and the spelled demon was amazed. Followed fake Zoro ordered by Wish explained Rudy how he had found them on the ground to save them. Rudy learned the spelled demon saved them both and didn't saw another person. After that, the spelled demon was surprised because Rudy was not feared against him. Rudy replied he wasn't scared because he saved them. Followed Rudy told Roger about the mana disaster, and he tried to cheer up Rudy. Suddenly Eris woke up and she was instantly scared to see a spelled demon. She tried to call Jelaine for help and she started to cry in front of them both. Ruijerd said this is the normal reaction of a person who met for the first time a spelled demon. Followed then, Eris introduced herself and she started unintentionally to be rude. She was scared and hid behind Rudy, but she learned Ruijerd is a kind person. Later, Eris complained about the lies against spelled demons and she was surprised to learn that spelled demons aren't monsters. Suddenly Rudy said she can ask Ruijerd to become a friend of hers. She was very shy, so Ruijerd asked her first to become friends. As a result, both were befriended now, and Rudy thought about how to get home. In the next morning, Eris was excited to start their journey in the demon continent. In addition, a new journey of Rudy started and the hot weather exhausted them. Also, Roger defeated a huge monster and the both were impressed. After that, Eris asked Roger how he could manage to sense the dangerous monster. Roger replied he could sense the monster with the eye of his forehead. Then he said, he will escort them and protecting them both on the journey. Arrived in a new demon village, Roger was arguing with a blue hair demon. The reason is the villager thinks the humans look suspicious. Roger was angry and told him he should call the chief. Then Rudy learned the demons were able to use telepathy and the chief was called. Followed Rudy greeted the chief of the village and he was glad that he learned demon god language. After that, he was asked about his necklace and one of the demons was shocked to hear Rudy is the student of Roxy because he was Roxy's dad. Then they were allowed to enter the village and Rudy shocked. He saw many female demons who looked like Roxy. In addition, Roxy's father said, Roxy left the village 20 years ago and demons lives longer than ordinary humans. Followed Rudy told Roxy's dad she is now a tutor in another human kingdom. However, Rudy tried to eat the weird looking soup and Roxas learned about the mysterious light. Followed Eris was asleep and Rudy had a naughty mind. Then Roger told his friend Roxas, he will escort the children's, but the problem is he wasn't able to enter cities. Rudy learned he had many problems as a spelled demon. Also, Ryard has a heart for children and saved a little girl in the past. After that, Ruckus told Rudy about Ryard's goal to dispel the spelled demon tribe's poor reputation. Rudy asked about the war and the bad rumors about spelled demons. Suddenly, Ryard got angry and said the rumors against spelled demon is wrong. Rudy learned they were in the past allies of the hero Laplace, but one day he betrayed the spelled demons. As a result, Laplace propagated that all spelled demons are dangerous. Rudy was surprised about the truth story, so Rudyard told them the spears which Laplace gave them were cursed with a strong spell. In addition, the spears controlled the spelled demons to kill their own family. Rudyard was angry, and as the leader of the spelled demon, he wanted to show the world the truth. Suddenly, Rudy decided to help Rudyard by his goal to dispel the spelled demon tribe's poor reputation. On the next day, Rudy said goodbye, and he was amazed by Rokari. The reason is she was 102 years old, but looked like in her mid-twenties. Then Rudy told the parents of Roxy that he want to be Roxy's future husband. As a result, Roxy's dad gave Rudy a sword as a gift. Then Eris thanked them for the kindness of Roxy's parents. After that, they started to continue their journey, and Rudy looked forward to help Rigerd by his goal. So Rigerd looked forward too, because he wanted to escort the two kids saved to their homeland. In the next days, Eris tried out the new sword, and she defeated many strong demon wolves. Rudy asked her to leave him some, but she already defeated them all. In the evening, Eris said she always dreamed to live like that. Rudy didn't feel her dream and he missed to ate some rice with grilled beef. On the next day, they arrived in a new demon town which was called Rikarisu. Then Rudy was excited to see many different demons. Eris was amazed too, and Ruijerd explained them, 
In the demon continent are many different demon tribes. Also he learned Spell Demon got the nickname Dead End and they need a solution to enter with Roger the city. He decided to leap over those cliffs, but Rudy stopped him. Then Rudy had a brilliant idea and he was able to sneak Roger into the city. Eris was immediately amazed by the beautiful city. Followed Rudy had the plan to register as an adventurer to earn some money. Then we see adventurer playing together and fooling around. Rudy and Eris appeared and they dressed up like punks, but nobody were scared. Rudy's plan was a failure, and he called Rudyard to enter the house. Rudy told them he is a famous spelled demon, but nobody believed him. All adventurer were laughing and looked down on Rudy. He was happy because his plan worked by dyeing Rudyard hair blue. After that guild receptionist registered them with the names Dead End. Rudy was aroused because the rectionist got three boobs. Then Eris is excited to live an adventurer life, but she couldn't read the quests. Rudy chose a C-rank quest, and another adventurer made fun of him. The reason was he called his party dead end, and the adventurer thought Rudy is stupid. Suddenly a frog demon started to provoke Rudyard, but he immediately felt his feared aura. As a result, he didn't make a fuss, and Royard didn't beat up the demon. Outside, Eris was complaining because she wanted to slay some dragons. But Rudy said they should celebrate the day, because nobody were able to identify Rudyard as an spell demon. Later, Eris saw blue light in the sky and she was amazed. In the night, Rudy was booking a room for three person. Suddenly, three guys tried to approach Eris, but she ignored the demon boys. She refused and she punched the boy in the face. She was furious because her new coat was broken. Rudy immediately stopped Eris for beating up the boy. Then Rudy healed the demon boy and he apologized for his behavior. Rudy learned the boys just wanted to offer them both to join his party. So Rudy told them he has his own party called Dead End. Then Kurt wished him good luck, but he said he will be the best adventurer party. Later in the room, Rudy told Eris he will repair her beloved coat tomorrow, and he was able to cheer her up. Also, he wanted to find a good quest to earn money for food. Suddenly, he met Man God again in his dreams. He was suspicious like always, and he told him his next tip. Rudy said he should make it quick, because he hates to be in his old body. Following this, he gave Rudy the advice to accept the quest to find a lost kitten. Rudy woke up, and he saw Eris watching the sky. She was worried and asked Rudy if they will make it home. Also, she was worried about Ghislaine and her family, but Rudy could cheer her up. On the next day, they were searching a kitten, and Roger used his third eye power to find the kitten. He sensed the aura of the kitten and lead them to a cave. Eris said the place stinks, but they need to enter the cave to save a little kitten. On the way to find a kitten, Rudy realized the kitten is a grown puma. Rudy would prefer Nike over puma, but he accepted his fate. Suddenly, they heard some voices of a group of demons. Rudy and his friends were hiding, and he started an attack against the bandits. However, the bandits were caught by a spell of Rudy. Richard and Eris immediately defeated the enemies and they caught them. Followed Rudy tried to get some information but he was kicked in his stomach. So he get injured and Richard was angry. The reason is Roger didn't like if someone hurt an innocent kid. Rudy said he shouldn't do such cruel things, because it wouldn't help the reputation of the spelled demons. Roger made trouble, and he was scolded by Eris. Then Rudy said he should promise him to never do cruel things again. After that, the criminals told them they kidnapped pets. Suddenly, Rudyard wanted to end the life of the criminals again, but Rudy stopped him. Also, he got a solution to save them. He asked them to team up with Rudy's party because he wanted to get higher rank quests. Then Rudyard was against his plan, but Rudy explained him with the help of them. They can make more money and also improving the spelled tribe's reputation. Suddenly, Rudyard making a fuss, but Eris scolded him. She explained him he shouldn't be a crybaby and tried to change his mind. So they were able to team up with the adventurer group and they were promoted to C-Rank's adventurer. Followed Rudy ordered them to choose a B-Rank quest and he wanted to trade it with a F-Rank quest. Suddenly the horse demon appeared and he looked down on the two adventurer parties. He insulted them and wished them good luck to survive as adventurers. Then we see Roxy. She discovered a board with the names of the deaths caused by the huge mana explosion a few weeks ago. She was glad that Rudy and his family is alive. Suddenly she saw a letter of Paul and two adventurers appeared behind Roxy. So Roxy learned that both adventurers were friends of Paul. In the followed morning, Rudy accepted a monster hunt quest. Eris was motivated to beating up some monsters and they were on the way to find the monster. Later, they entered a scary forest and Eris discovered some adventurers. The three boy they had met a few days ago were arguing with a huge wild boar demon. Rudy asked them, if they have saw some monsters, and he learned the other's adventurers accepted the same quest. 
After that, the wild boar demon was angry because he told the kids to go home. The three demon boys didn't want to let him get all the reward and he followed the wild boar demon. Then Rudy told Eris that it seems like their jobs are overlap, but he didn't want to go home. Suddenly Rugerd was worried about the three demon boys and wanted to help them. But Rugerd could convince Rudy to help the three boys. So Rudy planned to tail them and Eris was disappointed with Rudy's decision because she wanted to beat up some monsters. Then they followed the boys into the forest. Suddenly a monster spider appeared and scared them. They run away and another monster tried eat the three boys. Rudy didn't want to help them until they are desperate because he got a big plan that's only works after they are very desperate. So he waited to rescue the three boys. He planned to save the three boys in the last moment. Suddenly a demon boy was badly injured and was bleeding. Eris and Rougerd reacted immediately and they ran toward the monsters, so they defeated them with strong attacks. Eris dodged the attack of the giant snake and she used her superpower snake slash attack to defeat the monster. After the fight, Rougerd asked the boy if he is okay. Then he went to Rudy and asked why he stopped him. Rudy was ashamed and his answer made Rougerd angry. Rougerd said if he didn't had stop him, the boy would be alive. One of the demon boys tried to stop the fight between Rudy and Rugerd, but Rugerd ignored him, so he stopped Rugerd and said they are adventurers too and knew the danger. Kurt was sad and stopped them both to fighting each other. Then Rugerd apologized for treating him like a little kid. Later Rudy's party escorted them to a safety place. They said goodbye and wanted to go back to the town. Rudy was ashamed for his selfish plan. Suddenly they heard some fighting noises. So they rushed to the battlefield and saw many injured people. A red hood cobra was showing, and he was one of the bloods. The cobra tried to eat a wild boar and Rudy asked if they are ready for the battle. Following this, Rudy launched a magic attack against the hood cobra. Royard got the power of the crypts, and he slashed the giant cobra with his hood spear. Then Eris tried to launch an attack, but she failed. Rudy also missed his attack and Rudyard could stop the cobra in time. As a result, Eris slashed the cobra into two pieces. Rudy cast a second spell, and he could manage to destroy the Bloodhood Cobra with a strong explosion spell. So Eris checked if they have one, and she celebrated the victory against the cobra. Rudy thanked Rugerd, but he was still angry, because they didn't manage to rescue the adventurer. Back in the town, Rudy and his group were insulted by the horse demon. Suddenly Rudy learned the horse demon discovered his secret to trade the quest with another party. The horse demon was like a Neville Papperman from iCarly, and he wanted to snitch them to the guild. So Rudy was threatened to give him money, otherwise he will tell his secret to the guild. Rudy was in big trouble, and he didn't what he should do now. Followed, he tried to find a solution, and said to Eris she didn't need to be worry. Rudy's biggest goal was to bring Eris safely home. Suddenly he cast secretly a magic spell, and he risked his life to make Rougier angry. Before Rudy could cast his spell, Rougier revealed his true identity. The horse demon was afraid, and he caused everyone to run. Rogerd knew Rudy was in trouble and he wanted to beat up the horse demon. Rogerd threatened him and didn't allow him to snitch on them. The horse demon fainted from fear and Rogerd could solve Rudy's problems. Suddenly guardians wanted to arrest Rogerd. He managed to escape the guardians and left the city. Following this Rudy saw the boys, who were afraid too. Rudy asked them why they are scared. Then Rudy left them and he was disappointed with their behavior. Kurt was ashamed because he knew Rogerd had saved his life short time before. However, Rudy and Eris were searching Ruyard outside of the town, and they found him hiding behind a huge rock. Then Rudy apologized for doing such selfish decisions, but Ruyard wasn't blaming him. He knew Rudy just wanted to help him with his reputations as a spelled demon. Also, he understood Rudy risked his life too for protecting a beloved person. Ruyard and Rudy got along again. Then he explained Rudy what it is to be a real warrior, and he was grateful to have met a nice person like Ruyard. As a result, they both shook hands, and they looked forward to continue their journey. Eris also showed up and didn't want to be left out. In the next morning, Royard tried to find a barber, but he just shaved all his hair by himself. Rudy learned he wanted to save some money for buying real estates. Suddenly, Rudy found a Konoha headband, and Rugerd was promoted to a shinobi. Eris said she isn't so useless like Sakura, and Royard agreed. In the afternoon, they started to continue their journey. So they went to the next city, and Rudy was punished to peek at Eris in the changing room. In the followed days, Eris was excited to see the ocean for the first time. She immediately wanted to swim in the ocean. Then she decided to swim without swimsuit, and Rudy looked forward to see her naked. 
but Richard stopped Eris, because in the ocean are many dangerous monsters. Then they continued their journey and entered a new town. Rudy's group arrived in a port city. Followed we see Roxy's group, and behind them were Rudy. Rudy heard a familiar voice, but a man was chatting with him. Eris and Richard became in the journey very famous and got awesome nicknames. But the man didn't knew the name of Rudy and he got a lame name and he was disappointed. After that, they learned the trip with the ship is too expensive. At lunch, Rudy was deep in thought, and he told his friends they need to talk about money. The problem is the price for an adult is too expensive, and they couldn't pay the boat trip. Eris thought Rudy want to leave Rudyard behind, but he didn't have the intention to betray Rudyard. Suddenly Rudy got the idea to sell his ward, and Rudyard apologized for being a burden. In the night they were sleeping, and Rudy tried to figure out a solution for their problem. Followed Rudy met the man-god in his dreams again, and he said sorry for causing him trouble last time but he enjoyed to see Rudy was managed to solve his problems with Rogerd. Then Man God told him tomorrow to buy food from a street vendor. He didn't told him what will happening and said goodbye to Rudy. On the next morning, Eris trained with Ruger her sword fighting skills. She wondered why Rudy wanted to split up and Rogerd was distracted. As a result, Eris managed to win against Rogerd in the fight. She was very happy to getting stronger and she celebrated her win against Rogerd. Meanwhile, Rudy was deep in thought and he tried to figure out why man god told him to visit a food vendor suddenly he saw a woman with blue hair and he wondered what roxy is doing now then he bought food and roxy was running behind him suddenly he discovered a weird person who was starving and fainted out so rudy offered the mysterious person his food and she was very grateful for rudy's good deed following this she acted suspiciously and asked about his name rudy introduced himself and learned the crazy little girl called herself the great emperor of the demon world so Rudy didn't want to be rude and played along. Kishirika loved his reaction to greeting her like an emperor and praised Rudy. After that, her eye was able to sense that Rudy is a pervert and she made of him for being a naughty little boy. Then she offered him to grant a wish, so Rudy wished to be rich, but she was broke. As a result, Rudy made a joke and want to have some fun with her. She began to stripping off, but she stopped because she had already a fiance. Followed, she offered him to get a demon eye and he accepted. Rudy didn't believe her thought she just make jokes. Out of nowhere she grabbed his eye and changes one of his eye with a demon eye. After the operation he realized he got a demon eye and she said goodbye. So he gained the eye of foresight and he got a headache by using his new demon eye. On the way back to his friends he bumped into a man. The man was angry and he insulted Rudy. Suddenly Rudy saw the future and he used a wind spell to save the man. The man realized Rudy had saved his life and he let him pass. In the evening, Roger told them he heard of Kishirika's name. Rudy learned she is a powerful demon and was surprised because he thought she is just a crazy little brat. Followed Rudy decided to stay in his room until he can control his demon eye. Eris was excited because she wanted to get a demon eye too. After a week, Rudy was able to use his demon eye and he managed to awake his observation Haki. Followed, he trained with Eris and he wanted to test his new eye. Eris started to attack Rudy, but he could see the future moves of Eris. So he dodged all her attacks and he was able to hit her. Eris didn't give up, and she used all of his skills to defeat Rudy. She wasn't able to counter his attack, and Rudy won the fight. After that, Eris tried to trick him and congratulated him. Rudy was able to counter her attack, and she was angry to lost again Rudy. Then Richard praised him for becoming a strong warrior with his demon eye. Suddenly, Rudy wanted to challenge Richard to a fight, but he wasn't able to beat him up with his demon eye. Later, Rudy told Richard about his loss against Ryard. Eris replied he didn't need to comfort her because she just wanted to catch up with him. In the night, Rudy knew he just was able to win against Eris with his demon eye. He was ashamed to make Eris sad, although she trained every day to become stronger. Then Rudy tried to sneak out, but Royard stopped him. Rudy replied he wanted to get out for doing some kinky things, but Royard knew his real intention was to sell his ward to pay the fees for the boat trip. Following this, Royard was disappointed with his decision to sell the ward, which means a lot to him. Royard knew Rudy wanted to solve the problem that he caused. So he told Rudy he isn't alone and they are a team. Rudy replied, they haven't enough money for the proper affair and selling his staff is the best option. But Royard didn't want to let Rudy sell his staff for the problem which he had caused. He lectured Rudy and they should find a solution together. Also, Royard told him he would follow all his decisions. Suddenly, Royard sensed a suspicious man and Rudy shocked. Gallus offered to help Rudy because he was grateful that Rudy saved his life. In the days before, we see Roxy's group in an isekai Starbucks for adults. 
Alina wanted to hunt some men's to have fun with them. Roxy saw Alina flirting with the men and she asked herself if the men also would treating her like a attractive women. Suddenly a group of men appeared and asked Roxy to join their C-rank party. She rejected the offer and told them she is an A-rank mage. As a result they realized she is the famous A-rank mage Roxy. Alina teased her a bit and said she should have some fun with the three men. Later Roxy asked the two friends of Paul, what was Paul like back in those days? They called Paul as scum, and Roxy wondered what he had did in the past to be called scum. After a few days they got a lot of new information, and she was worried to heard about a party named Dead End. Alina told Roxy she got the information that Dead End is a handsome looking man. Talhan told Roxy he got the information that Dead End is a party of three person. Followed Roxy asked about the main issue and they hadn't find news about Paul's family. Talhand and Alina said Roxy didn't need to worry about Zenith, because she is a retired S-rank adventurer. On the next day, Roxy saw on the beach some kids playing together. She wondered how much Rudy has grown now. Afterwards she discovered two person fighting each other. Followed she was discovered by Rudyard and she run away. She didn't saw Rudy and arrived in the motel room safely. Suddenly she realized she was disturbing Alina, who had fun with a lot of guys. She didn't know what she should do, and she attacked them all with strong ice magic. After paying the repair for the inn, Roxy was broke. She said it's all Alina's fault. So Alina replied, Someday Roxy will understand why she played with so many handsome guys. Followed we see, Gallus transported Roydard on a boat. So Rudy and Eris sailed on a boat to the next town, but Eris caused him many troubles. He was scared, if the boat was sinking like the Titanic, and he hoped to experience a romance event with Eris. In addition, he wanted to make Eris to his wife on an abandoned island and become a real man. But the reality is cruel. Eris was seasick and she thought she will die. Suddenly Rudy was horny and he went to the bathroom. After going to the toilet, Eris noticed he smelled weird. Arriving in the next town, Eris was exhausted from the boat trip. She asked if Rudy could stay with her and use his healing spell. But Rudy replied he need to find Ruyard first and he went outside. Followed, Rudy was running to an abandoned house of the smugglers to see his friend Rogerd. Afterwards a man showed Rudy a hidden entry to the underground. He saw a suspicious place with many smugglers, who played cards. Also he discovered a huge magical dog. After that he find Rogerd, and he had the idea to save all kids. Rudy didn't know if he should help Rogerd to beaten up all smugglers to save all kids. Suddenly he said Rudy didn't need to get his hands dirty, he just need to wait after he had freed all kids. Followed Rudyard starting his plan to save all kids and beaten up all smugglers. Rudy was on his way to save five little girls. They thought Rudy is an enemy and one of the bad guys. Rudy told them he just want to rescue him. So he began to heal an injured girl and he was distracted for a short moment. Suddenly they heard a weird noise and all girls were afraid. Rudyard appeared and told him it's over. Rudy couldn't help everyone and Rudyard was very sad because he couldn't save all of them. Then Rudy used his beast god language to communicate with them. On the way outside, a beast girl was shouting. She asked why they didn't have saved the white magical dog in the prison. So Rudy was on the way back to the hidden place and he wanted to save the magical dog. Suddenly, he bumped into a strong barrier and wanted to use a spell to disable the barrier. Rudy managed to destroy the barrier and the magical got a liking on him. As a result Rudy was hugged by the dog and he realized how fluffy the dog is. Out of nowhere a beast people appeared and he attacked Rudy with a strong attack. Rudy was knocked out and he couldn't move his body. They thought Rudy is a member of the smuggler. Followed the leader found a trace of the kidnapped girls and they decided to split up. As a result Rudy was kidnapped and the beast men wanted to punish Rudy. In the next morning, Rudy was living in a new hut and he felt like he was on vacation with his luxurious bed. He also had a luxurious toilet with a big hole for making big business. Also he was served everyday delicious food that he enjoyed. But the reality is he was caught as a prisoner, who was waiting for his penalty. Later on, he tried to find a way to escape, and the guardians didn't believe he is innocent. They looked down on him and treated him like a wild animal in a zoo. Few days later he was exhausted by doing nothing. The beast people just lived their life happily and ignored him. Rudy gave up and his plan was to hope his friends will save him. Also, he glared at the bouncing boobs of the guardian, and she hated him. In the afternoon, Rudy wondered why they taking so long to rescue him. Suddenly two days later a man appeared and he was arrested with him. Rudy was naked and he acted like teabag from prison break. But he wasn't in prison break and just asked the man why he is arrested. 
Then Rudy learned the new guy was arrested because he was gambling and they caught them by cheating. Followed Geese said Rudy is a famous criminal now and everyone heard about his funny case. In the night, Rudy proved his skill as teabag and he forced Geese to give him a nice massage. Followed he asked Geese if he can help him to break out because he's getting worried about his friends. Geese refused to help him, but Rudy wanted to free himself without Geese's help. Suddenly, he realized the cute girl isn't on her position and he wondered where she is going. Following this, they saw the trees were burning and Reese asked if Rudy was causing the fire. After that, Rudy produced a key to open the prison out of woods, so Rudy and his new friend Geese managed to break out and run away together. Meanwhile, the beast people were attacked by bandits. Then he was shocked to see the horrible scene on the battlefield. Rudy was angry because they arrested him in a little cell, but he still couldn't allow the bandits to kidnap the innocent beast people. As a result, Rudy decided to rescue the beast people, and Geese was ready to help Rudy by his plan. After that, they started to fight, and Geese managed to defeat a bandit. Rudy began to cast a strong water spell. He was an isekai firefighter, and he was able to extinguish the fire. Geese was impressed by Rudy's water spell, and he was ready to fight against the bandits. Suddenly more bandits appeared, but the beast men who caught Rudy showed up, and he wanted to beat up all bandits. After defeating some bandits, he asked Rudy if he will support him to rescue the kidnapped children. So Rudy worked together with the strong beast people, and they rushed towards the enemies. They were able to defeat the henchmen, but Gallus used a little girl as hostage. Rudy learned Gallus planned to use him and his friends to find the village of the beast people. Also, he said he will got a lot of money by selling the girls to the nobles and asked if Rudy want to change the side. Rudy refused his offer and he made Gallus angry. As a result, he threw the girl as a bait and started to attack the beast people. Gallus managed to defeat many warriors and he badly injured the strongest of the beast people. Then Gallus revealed he is a famous criminal and told Rudy he should give up. Then Gallus had the plan to kidnap the girl and Rudy was scared because he wasn't skilled in combat fighting like Roger. The little girl cried and she was asking for help, but Rudy was frozen in fear. Suddenly, the sacred beast appeared and was on the way to attack Gallus. Rudy also attacked Gallus with a magic spell and they teamed up to defeat Gallus. Following this, Rudy's heart is poking and he told Gallus he will wing against him. Gallus started to attack Rudy, but he used his observation hockey to anticipate his enemy's movement. So Rudy dodged all his attacks and he tried to launch and counterattack. Suddenly Gallus used a dagger and he injured Rudy on his leg. Gallus was sure to finish off Rudy, but the magical dog rescued him. Also he lured Gallus into a trap and he was distracted with sand. Rudy immediately cast his strongest explosion spell and he hit Gallus with all his power. As a result Gallus was knocked out and Rudy won the fight, but he had no mana left and he fainted out. In the next morning, Rudy woke up and Eris was happy that he is alive. In addition, she congratulated him for defeating a North Saint. Afterwards, Gaius apologized for treating him like a criminal. Then Eris explained the story what they have experienced. Rudyard helped the beast people to fighting the bandits group, and he had a rough time too. So Rudy learned Eris was protecting the kids, and she find new friends. Eris was excited to arrive home and tell his grandfather about her journey. Meanwhile, Soros got the death penalty because he failed to respond appropriately to the mana disaster. The royal family looked down on him, and Sauros wished Eris and Rudy happiness if they still living. In the followed days, Rudy would sneak a peek at Eris and her friends while bathing, but Gaius asked him what he'd do in the box. Gaius smelled Rudy as sexual aroused, and he wanted to punish him, so Rudy apologized. Later they ate dinner and Rudy was happy to see Eris have fun with her new friend. After dinner, Rudy was playing with Dog Lucky. In the meantime, Eris taught her new friends the human language. Rudy was very proud to see his troublemaking student become a teacher too. Then Gaius thanked her for being a friend to his daughter Tona. Suddenly he discovered the ring of Jelaine and Eris told him about Jelaine. Followed Rudy asked them if they knew anything about her. Gaius was surprised she is alive and he told them, Jelaine abandoned the Doldia's duty. In addition he called Jelaine a disgrace to their people and he was very angry against her. After he left the hut, Eris followed him, because he insulted Eris' beloved master. Eris ran outside and said Jelaine is a kind person, and she always protected her. Also she said he isn't allowed to badmouth Jelaine, and Eris started to cry. Rudy tried to cheer her up and she asked Rudy why Gaius called her a disgrace. Suddenly Gaius asked Rudy if Jelaine become an admirable person. Rudy replied he also respect Jelaine and confirmed she is a kind person now. In the next morning Eris recalled the last memories of Jelaine. 
She missed Jelaine and hoped she is fine after the mana disaster. Then Tona appeared, and she wanted knew more about her aunt Jelaine. Eris learned Jelaine is the little sister of her dad. Following this, Eris said Jelaine is her sword instructor and she's really nice. Tona replied her dad always said she shouldn't become like Jelaine. Also she hates the sword practice every day because her dad get angry, if she didn't practice. Suddenly Eris replied she is just like her, because she also hates study. But she said she is grateful to Jelaine for showing her the way of sword. Tona was motivated and asked Eris to teach her swordsmanship like Jelaine. Tona's cousin said her father will be mad if she trained the sword style of her aunt. Then Eris wanted to show Tona some sword skills and Tona's father was outside. Later, Eris trained with Tona sword fighting and she showed her everything she learned by Jelaine. Meanwhile, Rudy was watching them both and Gaius showed up. He told Rudy his daughter always refused to learn swordsmanship. Also he asked about Jelaine and Rudy told him she got the title Sword Queen. Gaius was felt guilty to badmouth his little sister. After few months, Tona was taught by Eris swordsmanship, and she made a lot of progress. At lunch, Eris had a lot of fun with her new friends, and she teased Tona. Suddenly, Tersena was looking sad, because she knew Eris will leave them soon. Tona asked Eris to stay forever with them, but Eris replied she need to go home to find her family. Meanwhile, Rudy created a Ruyard Barbie, and he played with his new friend Lucky. Then Rudy was told the sacred beast is aroused. He realized he should stop playing with Lucky and was embarrassed. Suddenly, Tersena told them, Eris is fighting with Tona outside. Tona got mad because she didn't want Eris to leave them. After they stopped the fight, Rudy noticed Eris held back her power against Tona. Following this, Tersena told Tona, she needs to apologize to Eris, but she refused. Also, her father appeared, and she asked her about the training with Eris. Followed guys told about Jelaine's childhood. He said, she was a burden, because she refused to study or practice swordsmanship. One day a swordsman took her away from the village, and he regretted that he didn't say goodbye. He said to Tona, she will regret her decision too, if she doesn't get along with Eris. Followed, we see Rudy asking Eris, if she didn't have to do something before they leave the village. Rudy heard the voices of Tona and Tersena, and he went for a walk with Dog Lucky. Then the girls were sneaking into the room of Eris. Eris asked what they are doing in her room, so Tona apologized to Eris and she hoped they can get along again. Eris accepted her apology and Tona was very happy. Then they showed Eris the self-made Barbies of Rudy and Eris. In the next day, Rudy's group were ready to leave the village. Then the chief to the village thanked Rujert for his great help, and Rudy was surprised about their friendship. Behind Rudy the girls were crying and she promised to visit them someday again. Suddenly guys wanted to spar with Eris. He asked Eris to show him the swordsmanship of his little sister. Eris accepted his request, and they started to fight against each other. So Lucky started to bark, and the two began with the fight. They crossed the swords and stopped moving. Suddenly Eris was angry, and Gaius thanked her for showing his little sister's swordsmanship skills. Afterwards Gaius said, next time she should visit them again with Jelaine. Following this, Rudy and his friends leave the village. Suddenly Geese appeared. He told Rudy he escort them to the city Millis. Later Rudy thought the way looks a little bit strange, and Geese told them the story about the legends of Millis. Rudy saw a weird stone, and Geese said it's a monument for the seven great powers. So Geese explained Rudy about the seven strongest fighters in the world. Rujird replied in his childhood he trained and hoped to become one of the seven great powers too. After many days on the journey, they soon arrived in the capital Millis. Followed Geese discovered the capital, and he wanted to say goodbye. Suddenly Eris asked Geese to teaching her cooking if they met again. Rudy was surprised and realized she wants to become a good housewife. Before Geese left them, he gave Rudy the advice to visit the Adventurer Guild in the capital Millis. Following this, Rudy and his friends entered the capital and they booked an Airbnb apartment. In the evening, Rudy began with his team dead-end strategy meeting. Rudy said, it's been one and a half years since they started the journey. So he wanted to stay in Millie for a while to earn some money first. Also, Rudy got a plan to help Ruyard with the reputation of the spelled demon. Then Rudy wanted to make a day off, because he needs to write letters to tell their family they are alive and save. However, Eris decided to slay Goblin in the next day, and Rudy was worried about her plan. As a result, Ruyard answered he will take care of Eris. Followed Rudy tried to signal his friend that he is counting on him for protecting Eris tomorrow. In the followed morning Rudy wrote a letter, and he wondered if his father was worried about him. Suddenly, he saw someone was kidnapped, and he didn't want to help, because last time he was convicted as a criminal. But the rule of his party is to help people in need, and Rudy went to find the kidnappers. 
Afterwards, he followed the criminals until an abandoned house. Rudy was observed them first, and he planned to rescue the boy when the criminals are distracted. Suddenly Rudy was shocked to find a panty and he screwed up. Rudy decided to show himself and he wore the panty as his mask. Rudy said he is rudyard of dead end and he will save the kidnapped boy. Following this, Rudy defeated the kidnappers and more enemies appeared. A cute girl was the owner of the panty and Rudy made weird things with her panty. After that, she attacked Rudy and he dodged all the attacks. He didn't try to defeat and he was glaring at her huge boobs. Suddenly he was attacked by a mage, but he could dodge the attack. However, the leader of the group appeared and Rudy felt like he knew this guy from somewhere. Then the drunken man launched his attack against Rudy, but he managed to stop him with a magic spell. He didn't give up and he dodged all attacks of Rudy. So Rudy was overwhelmed and he realized the drunken man is on another level. The man was able to cut off the panty and he stopped to fight. The reason is Paul was the drunken guy and he was shocked to see his son alive. In the afternoon, Rudy glared at the boobs of a member of his father's party. Then Paul asked him if he have seen his message. Rudy didn't knew about his message to find his mom, Lilia, and his little sister, Aisha. So Rudy started to tell his story about his journey with Eris and Rudyard. He said he learned a lot in his journey and make a lot of friends. Suddenly his father was angry and thought Rudy was goofing around the whole time. Rudy replied he had a hard time too, but Paul overwhelmed him with a question. As a result, he realized he didn't thought to find out more information about the victims of the Mana disaster. He was ashamed and his father accused him of getting his priorities wrong. Everyone were shocked how Paul treated his son. Then Rudy said he had a hard time and he just tried to keep Eris safe. Suddenly Paul insulted his son and he made Rudy angry. A girl tried to stop Paul blaming everything on Rudy. Followed Rudy said he have no right to lecture him because he drank beer all the time with random girls. Paul was angry and he punched his son into the face because he didn't knew his family wasn't found. Rudy launched an attack against his father too and he used his demon eye to win against his father. Following this, Paul was beaten up by his son and he said he was scared too. Paul learned he was lonely and desperate to find a way home. Suddenly a little girl appeared and she stopped Rudy to beaten up Paul. Rudy recognized his little sister and tried to tell her his identity, but Nora didn't recognize her big brother and said he should stop bullying her father. Rudy was confused because everyone was staring at him and mistaking him for the bad guy. Suddenly his father told Rudy he isn't the only one who got caught in the mana disaster. Rudy learned a lot of people died or are missing since the mana disaster and his father left a message to all adventurer. Then Rudy learned his mother hasn't been found and he just formed a big group to search for the missing persons. Suddenly he realized the kidnapped boy was the kid who bullied Sylphie in his childhood. Rudy felt sorry for beating up his father short time before. After a nap, he wanted to get along with his father, but he remembered about the words of his father. He threw up by thinking his family members are missing. In the night, Eris asked Rudy, who beat him up. Rudy told them he met his father in the town today. Eris was angry and planned to beaten him up because she knew Rudy was working so hard to see his family again. Followed Roger told Eris should comfort Rudy instead to cause more problems. Afterwards, Eris tried to figure out how she can cheer him up. She decided to hug him and told him she will always be on his side. Then we see Paul, how he was teleported to an unknown place and he was worried about his family. The last thing he remembered was the weird thing in the sky. Followed, he started to go home with his little daughter, Nora. On his journey to find his home, he was worried about Nora. After several weeks passed, he arrived home, but the village disappeared. Following this, he decided to write a message. Paul was able to help many families, but every day without finding his own family members made him depressed. But he didn't give up because he knew he need to take care of Nora. Back in the present, Geese met Paul in an inn. Geese asked what his problem is, and Paul shared his story about his son Rudy. As a result, Geese asked him if he expecting too much from an 11 years old boy. He agreed that Rudy is a genius, but he asked Paul if he would manage to survive the demon continent by himself as an 11 years old boy. Paul was sure everyone would survive with a spelled demon on his side. Suddenly, Geese said he is a softy of the central continent, and he didn't know how difficult it is to survive on the demon continent. So Geese explained him about the circumstances of the demon continent, and he said Rudy didn't have an easy way. Paul asked, why did his son seem so happy if he was close on his limits? Then Geese replied, maybe he didn't want to worry him because he is a hopeless dad. 
Suddenly Paul realized he looks pathetic, and Geese felt sorry for Rudy to see his father become a drunk addict guy after reunited with him. Before Geese left the inn, he asked why he isn't happy to see his son healthy and alive. So Paul was ashamed after hearing the words of his friend Geese. In the night, Paul was in his room, and he was happy to see his little daughter. Suddenly he imagined Rudy, who was injured on the ground and blamed him for not having saved him. So he went outside, and he understood the advice of his friend Geese. In the followed day, we see Rudy, who got a sad face in the inn with his friends. Then his father entered the inn, and Eris was furious. He introduced himself as Rudy's dad, and Eris tried to protect Rudy, but Rudy understood his father just want to say sorry. Meanwhile, Eris tried to beaten him up, but Ruyard stopped her from making trouble. Before he went outside, he gave Paul an advice and said he should be happy that his son is alive. Later Paul said Ruyard seemed like a nice guy and he is grateful that he saved Rudy. Also his father apologized for his behavior yesterday, but Rudy stopped him. Rudy admitted that he had acted wrong too and he said sorry. Then Rudy told his father about his goal and his father told him all the townspeople are vanished. Rudy replied he will still travel there. Also he said after his journey he will find his mother and Lilia. Followed he had the plan to left the inn. Suddenly the owner stopped him and told Rudy he should look at least in his dad's face. Rudy was shocked to see his sad face and he felt like he had seen it somewhere. Then he recalled the memories about his old life when he started to stay home. He was playing games with his only friend. Suddenly his friend said he admire him for playing the whole day video games. But Rudy misunderstood his intention to help him and he attacked his friend. Later he realized his friend just wanted to cheer him up but his friend never visited him again. As a result, he didn't want to make the mistake again, and he knew his dad tried to cheer him up. So Rudy said they should pretend that the day before never happened. Following this, Rudy said they should pretend to be reunited for the first time. So Rudy hugged his dad, and he was happy about his son's words. Paul told him he is happy to find him, and he said sorry to his beloved son. Finally, they got along, and Rudy was happy too. The following morning, they both were making jokes and having fun together. Suddenly, Eris was showing, and Rudyard told Rudy, it wasn't easy to stop Eris. She was angry about his father because he made Rudy unhappy. Followed his father apologized and Rudyard said he didn't need to say sorry because they could solve the problem. Afterwards Eris was healed by Rudy with his healing spell. In addition he told him about his new plan to travel to the central continent because his dad gave him traveling money. Followed he told Eris about the tragedy about their homeland. She learned her family is still missing and they haven't found Jelaine. Then Eris replied, she is prepared about the bad news. Rudy said, they will leave the town Millis tomorrow, and they looked forward. In the followed morning, Rudy said goodbye to his family, and they left the town. Later, Geese appeared, and Paul learned Geese had helped him to reunite with his son. In the following weeks, Rudyard was often challenged by many adventurers, who wanted to claim be the strongest. He defeated all of them, and he wondered why everyone wanted to challenge him. After a while, they finally sailed to the central continent and Eris asked Rudy for his heal spell. He was seasick too and couldn't help Eris. Meanwhile, Rudyard wondered why the both feeling sick and he just relaxing on a corner. Rudy couldn't wait any longer to arrive at the central continent. Then he said he missed the delicious rice dishes with pork. Suddenly, Eris said he should stop talking about food at time like this. Instead, he should start using his heal spell. Also, Rudy got the plan to enjoy the journey and Rudyard agreed his plan. Later he was thinking about his missing family and friends, he hoped they all are safe. Followed we see Roxy talking with a horse demon. Roxy was thinking to visit her parents and she was told that she have changed in the last two years. The horse demon made her many compliments, and Roxy thought he was joking. She was happy about the words, and she also was proud about become a high-ranking mage. After that, Roxy asked the horse demon if he still make money by going after the weak. He replied, he was lectured two years ago by a party of three person named Dead End. However, Roxy was shocked to hear the name Dead End, and she got goosebumps. Suddenly, the horse demon learned she never gone home in all this time. She thought her parents didn't want to see her, and she avoided to visit her family. The horse demon told he became a dad of three children. Then he said that he sometimes fights with his children, but he makes up with them immediately. In addition, he said nobody of her family would care if she can use telepathy or not. In the following day, she decided to visit her family. Roxy wondered her village after the 20 years a little bit, but it's still quiet like always. Then some villagers tried to communicate with telepathy, and Roxy was ashamed. 
Roxy tried to avoid the glares of the villagers, and she always hated the village. The reasons is, she always felt like she didn't belong to the village. Suddenly Roxy heard some kids playing together, and she smiled. She looked around the place and recalled the memories of her childhood. Then a boy was injured, and she cast a healing spell to help him. They used telepathy to said thanks, but she became sad. Then the mother of the kids showed up, and she wanted to talk with Roxy, and she ran away. Later she arrived at her home, and her parents were happy to see Roxy. Then they understood Roxy didn't like the village. Rokari realized her daughter want to rest, and they said they are glad she is healthy. Following this, the parents communicated with telepathy, and she was ashamed. Suddenly, she decided to left the village, and her parents tried to convince her to stay at least a night. His parents asked her when she visit them again, but she replied she may never come back. So Roxy's mom asked her if she can visit them at least once every 20 years. So she replied she will visit them once in 50 years, and her mother was happy. Following this, she saw the toys of her childhood. She remembered the time her mother taught her the human language because she could not communicate through telepathy. One day she tried to play with the other kids outside, but she understood she can't communicate with the other kids. As a result, she cried and thought she is a bad girl. Her parents were desperate because they didn't want to see their beloved daughter feeling bad. After this accident, she ran away because she thought her parents didn't want a useless daughter like her. In that moment, she understood her parents didn't blame her, so she realized they loved Roxy all the time, and she apologized for leaving them without warning. Roxy's parents were happy to get along again, and she no longer felt like a burden. In the morning, Roxy was greeted by her parents. They prepared breakfast, and she was happy to enjoy the dish of her parents after all the time. Followed Roxy told her parents, she will leave them soon again, because she want to find her missing apprentice. Suddenly her father told her, Rudy visited them one years ago and she was surprised about the good news. Then she learned Rudy is traveling with a spelled demon. She was frozen in fear and she fainted out. In the afternoon, she said she will visit them soon, and her mother told her to bring Rudy next time. In the followed days, she still can't believe that Rudy was one of the trio called Dead End. She was surprised and she interrupted Alina by making babies. As a result, she destroyed the room again and she paid the repair costs like last time. Then she planned to find Zenith, Lilia, and Aisha because she knew Rudy is safe now. So Roxy's party traveled to the next demon town to find the rest of Paul's family. Then we see Rudy dreaming again, and he met in his dream the man-god. He blamed man-god that his advices lead him in many big troubles. But the man-god said he should be grateful, because with his advices, Rudy got a demon eye. Followed he asked if the man-god knew about the whereabouts of his family members. So man-god said he will help him to find his family. Rudy learned he will find his littler sister Aisha imprisoned in the kingdom Shirone, but he isn't allowed to reveal his true identity. Suddenly, he woke up in the middle of the night and he was confused about the pictures he have seen in his dreams. In the morning, they finally arrived in the central continent. Rudy was deep in thought and he didn't know what he will experience next in his journey. After several weeks, he arrived in the kingdom Sharon with his friends. Rudy remembered the man God told him he needs to write a letter to Roxy. Following this, Rudy told Eris about Lilia and his little sister, and she wants to help finding Rudy's family members. In the afternoon, he wrote a letter to Roxy, and he went outside to send his letter to the royal family. Rudy searched for the place, and he wondered why soldiers were arresting his little sister Aisha. Suddenly, Rudy sensed someone is following him. So Rudy ran away, and he tried to lure the person who followed him into a trap. He thought someone of the kingdom Shironi have a grade on him. Then Rudy heard the voice of Aisha, who was arrested by some soldiers. She was crying and complained that the soldiers stole her letter. Suddenly, Aisha managed to escape and asked Rudy to save her. As a result, he cast a spell to trap the soldiers and they called reinforcement. They both were surrounded and Rudy told Aisha to hold tight because he cast an earth spell which threw them both to the sky. Later, Aisha introduced herself and he was impressed by her good manners. Rudy introduced himself with a fake name and he used the name Shadow Moon Knight, but he immediately regretted to choose such an embarrassing name. Suddenly Aisha asked Rudy for a favor and she got the plan to send Paul a letter to save her mother. However, Rudy learned she tried to contact Paul, but the soldiers always steal her letter. Rudy asked her if she have anyone else she can count. She replied she have a big brother, but she can't count on him. Rudy learned she found his secret box with Roxy's panty and she was disgusted by Rudy. Also, he realized Aisha is very smart for a six-years-old girl. In addition, Rudy learned she also knew about his bad behaviors in the past, and he was very ashamed to be called a pervert by his little sister. 
As a result, he realized why he wasn't allowed to reveal his true identity. Aisha asked him for his real name, and he answered his name is Kanal, and he belongs to the adventurer group Dead End. In the night, Rudy explained to his friends that he wanted to correct the wrong impression by showing his little sister his good side. After that, they wanted to beat up the royal knights, but Rudy stopped them and said they should wait for the respond of Roxy. In the followed morning he was sleeping, but a knight appeared. Ginger introduced herself and said she is a member of the royal guards. So Rudy learned Roxy invited him to the royal palace, and he was very happy to hear the words. Rudy changed his clothes, and he told her friends he will introduce them to Roxy later. Then Eris said he should take care, and Rudy was scared that Aisha will woke up. Following this, Ginger told Rudy his master often boasted about him for being a genius. Rudy was happy about the words, and he was guided to a suspicious room. Suddenly Ginger took all his stuff and he was ready to see Roxy again. Rudy got permission to enter the room and he heard a male voice. So Rudy was greeted by the Prince of Kingdom Sharoni and he got an evil plan. Suddenly he saw Lelia tied up on the floor and he was very confused. One of the knight trapped Rudy and he fall into a deep hole. In addition he couldn't escape and he tried to use his fire spell to destroy the invisible barrier. Prince Pax showed up and he told the Magic Circle is a king-class barrier, who he built to capture Roxy. Then he introduced himself and said he is the seventh prince of the kingdom. Followed Rudy learned Roxy left the kingdom and he just want to use Rudy as a bait to lure Roxy in his trap. Also Pax said he will use Roxy as his personal toy and make with her many babies. Rudy was shocked about his evil plan, but Rudy understood Pax is an isekai Eric Cartman. After revealing his plan, the prince closed the hole and Rudy was furious. He tried to finding a way out of the trap to save Lilia. Then we see Rudy's family glaring at the window, and they saw a huge laser beam. Suddenly the explosion target the whole village and Lilia tried to protect her little daughter. They were teleported into a river, and Aisha nearly drowned. Lilia wandered with Aisha for several days until she arrived at the kingdom of Chiron. In the royal palace, she asked for Roxy, but Prince Pax locked her in a prison cell. In the present, Rudy was very desperate, and he didn't know what he should do. He realized the barrier nullified his magic power, and it's impossible to escape. Then he praised and hoped his friends will save him. Suddenly a mysterious person appeared, and he introduced himself as the third prince, Zenoba. Then he asked about the action figures, which Ginger confiscated. Rudy replied he just bought it from a store on the demon continent and he said he didn't know who the artist is. Suddenly he was asked if he recognized the Roxy figure, because he wants to find the artist. Following this, Rudy learned Zenoba got the hobby to collect rare figures, and he was amazed about the detail of the Roxy Barbie. As a result, Rudy learned Zenoba is just an otaku, and he was proud that someone else praised his self-made Barbie. Then Rudy saw Zenoba have removed the birthmark on her hand and he was furious. He explained Zenoba that the birthmark is an important detail, and he was ashamed for removing her birthmark. Rudy tried to cheer him up, and the prince understood Rudy is the artist. He showed Rudy respect, and he swears to be loyal to his new master. Following this, Rudy recalled the otakus in his old life, and he knew Zenoba is one of them. Later we see Rajerd and some of the royal knights were helping them. Eris almost revealed the truth identity of Rudy, and she learned Rudy is currently imprisoned. So she wants to save Rudy immediately, but a knight stopped Eris. Afterwards, the knight told Rajerd they'd like to rescue the kidnapped families first. The knight explained that Prince Pax has taken their families as hostage. As a result, they were forced to do evil things and asked for the help of Rudy's friends. Eris accepted to help the innocent knights. Ruyard said Eris isn't allowed to fight because she should protect Aisha. Eris understood his decision and wished him good luck. In the meantime, Zenoba tried to find the mechanism to free Rudy. Also, he learned Prince Zenoba traded all his subordinates for the Roxy figurine. Then Rudy said that he will not make Zenoba to his student if he cannot free him from the barrier. Zenoba got a new plan and told Rudy, he just need to wait a little bit longer in the barrier. Later on, Eris wondered what is happening outside, and a knight told about an emergency. Aisha explained the knight used a tool for signal everyone about the danger of the third prince Zenoba. Eris learned Zenoba is a blessed child who was born with the power of Superman. Suddenly, Zenoba kidnapped his little brother to free Rudy because he wanted to become Rudy's student. Eris was worried about Rudy and tried to find him. Then we see Zenoba, who threatened Pax to dissolve his barrier and free Rudy, but he ordered the knight to fight against his big brother and threatened to kill the kidnapped families if they didn't save him. Eris stopped them and said Rujard is on the way to save their missing families. The knights learned a spell demon is saving their family, and Ginger decided to do nothing. Following this, 
Rudy was shocked to see how strong Zenoba is and he was bullying his little brother. Pax replied, he will let Rudy out, and Zenoba unintentionally broke the arm of his little brother. Also Rudy was very confused, and he was surprised that Ginger is on his side. In the next morning, everyone were freed by Ryard and the knight were happy to see the kidnapped family members. Rudy learned Ginger helped them all the time and she gave Zenoba that figure of Roger. Following this, Rudy was happy to see his little sister reunited with Lilia. Suddenly Zenoba showed up to celebrate Rudy, but he underestimated his own strength and Rudy was injured. In the afternoon, Eris told Aisha more about the hero stories of Kanal, and she admired Rudy. Later, Lilia gave Rudy his treasure box, and he was embarrassed by seeing the stolen panty of Roxy. Followed, he learned Sylphie planned to send a necklace for his 10th birthday. He was sad, and Lilia tried to cheer him up. In addition, she asked Rudy if Aisha had been rude to him, but he replied, she is a bright girl. Suddenly Aisha asked to accompany him by his journey. The reason is, Lilia planned that Aisha became a maid who served to her half-brother. But she didn't want to become a maid of a pervert and she asked Rudy to save her. Rudy wondered what Lilia had been teaching her daughter. Rudy didn't allow her to accompany on the dangerous journey, but he gave his headband as a gift. He said she can keep it as a lucky charm which will protect her. Aisha didn't know Rudy is her big brother, but she was very happy about his gift. Then they said goodbye, and Lilia drove with Aisha to find Paul. Suddenly Aisha said sorry to called him a pervert, and he was very surprised. Lilia was also surprised that Aisha knew about Rudy's true identity all along. Later we see Zenoba, who got a punishment, and he was sad to separate from his beloved master. A few months passed and we see Rudy and his party members injured. Rudy was confused, and a strong enemy defeated him. After that, we see the time before he was attacked. Rudy was on the way with his friends to the next town, and Eris was motivated like always. They traveled several weeks and had a lot fun together on the journey. One day Eris saw dragons flying on the sky. Also she trained every day with Ruger, and she became very strong. Her abilities increased very quickly, and she was able to counter the attacks of Roger. Then Rudy was impressed by her progress and brought them towels. After that, Ruger said she can call herself a warrior now. Rudy congratulated her for becoming a full-fledged warrior. She was very happy and thought she is dreaming. As a result, she told Rudy to pinch her and she punched him in his face because Rudy pinched her breasts. In addition, Ruger told her that he would no longer treat her like a child. In the followed days, they were wandering a mountain and Rudy was afraid of heights. Suddenly, Eris saw a dragon and she asked Rudy if he can take them down. He doubted because red dragon are known for very powerful dragons. Ruger agreed with him and said even the lesser of the seven great powers would probably be forced to turn back, but he said the stronger ones of them could manage to slay a dragon. Then Rudy was deep in thought, and his friends stopped, because they were scared. Rudy didn't know why his friends were shaking, and he waited until a two mysterious person were shown. Rudy looked at them, and the mysterious guy stopped too. Roger also warned them both not to move, and the bull was scared and jumped down from the mountain. Suddenly the guy asked, if they both are Rigerd the Spell Demon and Eris Greyrat from the Dead End Party. He wasn't expecting to encounter them, but he let them slide and went on. Suddenly Rudy stopped the guy and learned he is Orstad, who belongs to the Seven Great Powers. Rudy asked him why he knew their name. Then Orstad was surprised to learn that Paul got a son and said he shouldn't have a son. Suddenly Rigerd warned him to come any closer, and he was angry, because Rudy saw him in his eyes. He asked Rudy what did he want, and Rudy asked, if he knew something about the mana disaster. Following this, Orstad asked him if the word man-god mean anything to him and he attacked Rudy. Rudyard managed to save Rudy in time and Orstad called Rudy an apostle of the man-god. Followed Rudyard tried to protect Rudy and he fought against one of the seven great powers. Orstad's mission was to destroy the apostle of man-god and he dodged all of Rudyard's attacks with ease. In addition, he beaten up Rudyard and he didn't show mercy to him. So Rudy saw his friend unconscious on the ground, and he froze in fear. Then Orstad began to launch his attack to destroy Rudy. Eris didn't let him kill Rudy, and she tried to attack him. But he dodged her attack and smashed her into the wall. As a result, Eris was defeated too, and Rudy saw the next move of Orstad. Rudy was shocked, and Orstad said, Before he die, he should give the man God the message that dragon god Ostrid murdered him. Before he left, Eris tried to attack her with a fireball but she was badly injured and couldn't manage to cast the spell. Rudy used his last mana too and tried to defeat Orstad with an earth spell, but Orstad wasn't impressed by his attack, and he looked down on Rudy. Rudy didn't give up, 
and he used all his power to attack him. Orstad was surprised about Rudy, he decided to cast a strong spell too. Following this, Rudy focused to cast his strongest fire spell, and he shot with his last power against the enemy. He hoped to defeat him, but Orstad just absorbed his spell, and his own spell almost broke against the power of Rudy. He was impressed, and understood he might be on par with Laplace. After seeing Rudy's enormous power, he couldn't let him slide, and he ended the life of Rudy. Eris couldn't believe that Rudy will die, and she despaired. Rudy was sad, that he couldn't bring Eris home, and Orstad left them. The party dead end was destroyed, and Rudy fainted out. Followed Rudy met the man-god, and he asked why that ousted guy attacked him. Man-god replied Orstad is the wicked dragon god, so the guy hates him. In addition, he explained Rudy, he can't see anything to do with Orstad, because he is cursed. Rudy learned about the cursed children, and Orstad is one of them. Afterwards he was told the curse affects that everyone is hated or feared by every living creatures in this world. Rudy learned more about the cursed children, and the man-god explained him, the spelled demon, were cursed by Laplace. But the man-god said, the curse of Rudyard is almost disappeared, and he just need to wait. Followed Rudy learned that Orstad is the strongest of the seven great powers, although he is only ranked two. After that, Rudy accepted to die now, and he said goodbye. Suddenly God told him that he hadn't died, and Rudy woke up. Eris was very happy to see him alive, and she asked him, if he's all right. Followed Eris explained him the woman Nanahoshi who accompanied Orstad healed them all. Rudy wondered why the masked woman healed them after beating them all up. After that Rudy hugged Eris and she began to cry. She was very happy that Rudy is alive and no one is dead of their group. Then Rudy said that they must find a place to rest. In the followed day, Rudy dreamed again, and he saw all of his family and friends enjoying a party. He got a nightmare, and all of his friend and beloved ones were disappearing. Suddenly, he turned into his old body, and he was attacked by the hand of Orstad, who looked very angry at him. Rudy woke up and he realized it was all just a dream. After that, Rigerd asked him about the man-god, and Rudy explained him everything. Rigerd learned Laplace transferred his curse to the spelled demon. Rudy also told him that the curse has almost vanished over time, and he just need to be patient. So Rigerd was very delighted to hear that he can clear his name through hard work. Rudy get back to sleep, and he smiled when he saw how relieved his friend was. On the next day, Rudy arrived home and his village was destroyed. He remembered all the experiences he had with his family and friends. He was shocked to see his destroyed home, and he recalled the last memories of his mother. Afterwards we see Eris and she saw the sad face of Rudy. He went outside and visit the big tree who he played every day with his childhood friend Sylphie. Then Rugerd and Eris tried to cheer him up. Rugerd said he don't need be a babysitter anymore, and Eris didn't know what she could do. Following this, Rudy replied he was useless all the time, but his friends said he was wrong. Rugerd said he should be proud, because he helped the spelled demon with the reputation. In addition, he showed him new options in his life and he saved many peoples on their journey. Rugerd managed to cheer him up and making him smile. Afterwards he said to Eris, she will become a great warrior someday, who will surpass him. Followed he asked them, if he can treat them the last moment like children's. Eris was very sad, because she knew their journey together end after this day. Then Rudyard wanted to return his valuable necklace from Roxy, but Rudy asked him to keep it. Followed he said goodbye to the two, and he left them. Rudy was very sad, and he remembered about the time when he met his friend who always protected them. Also Eris became sad and recalled the happy time together. He hoped to meet him someday again, and from then on, they went their separate ways. Later, he rode on a horse with Eris to her home, and they discovered many peoples, who lost their family and home. Suddenly Eris discovered Ghislaine, who was glad that they were safe. Eris said she is glad too, that they both are alive and Alphonse asked Rudy to wait outside. Eris said he should stay, and he was allowed to hear the bad news. Following this, Eris was told that her parents passed away and his grandfather was executed. In addition, Eris learned that one of the main family offered Eris to become his concubine. Jelaine was angry, and she asked Alphonse if he is insane to accept the offer. He replied he just thinks about the best solution for the Boreas family. Then Jelaine said she don't have to listen to Alphonse and she can run away to live happy. Eris stopped them arguing and said she needs some time alone. Following this, Rudy was sent out too, and he heard Eris crying. Outside he saw a list of the missing townspeople. Suddenly he saw Sylphie is missing and he checked the deaths list. He was glad to hear that Sylphie is probably alive. In the night Rudy was exhausted from the day and Eris visited him. 
she entered the room of Rudy, and he asked if she feels better now. After that he asked her what she will do now, and she replied she didn't care about the offer. Suddenly she said she turned 15 the other day, and he asked if he can grant her a wish. Suddenly, she wished Rudy to become her family, and asked him to sleep together. Rudy didn't know what is going on, and he wasn't sure to accept her offer. Followed Eris started to seduce him, and he said she is beautiful. Rudy tried to withstand her seduction, but she didn't give up. As a result, she convinced him to sleep with her. So she popped his cherry, and Rudy recalled the time since he met Eris. In addition, he remembered all good and bad memories with her, and was happy to become finally a real man. In the followed morning, he woke up with a smile, and he was very proud. Then he was ready to wake up his beloved girl, but she disappeared. He found a letter from her saying goodbye to him. Following this, Alphonse said she set out on a journey with Jelaine to become a swordmaster. Rudy shocked, and he was sad about her leaving him. In the followed days, we see Eris woking up and Jelaine said she can keep sleeping. She said it's fine and Eris began her next journey to become a great swordmaster. In the meantime, Rudy woke up too and he was still in shock. Following this, Rudy recalled his old school life, where he tried to stand up to the bullies. As a result, they took him to the gym and hit him with a basketball. Since that day, he was always bullied and he decided never to go to school again. His parents tried to cheer him up, but he ignored them, so their attempts to persuade him to leave his room failed, and they decided to leave him alone. Then Rudy started to cry and didn't know what he should do. Back in the present, Alphonse visited him, and he tried to cheer him up. He asked if he wants to help him, because they have struggled due to their distance from the river. But Rudy didn't react, and he just lay depressed in his bed. Then Alphonse said he intent to report that Eris perished in an accident following teleportation. Rudy understood that Alphonse was trying to get him out of bed, but he sent him away and asked if he had nothing better to do. He replied that he is not the only one suffering, and that many people are struggling to survive due to the lack of food. After that, Alphonse left him alone and he hoped that Rudy could find his will to live again. Meanwhile, Eris slayed many monsters and Ghislaine asked her if she is sure with her decision. Later we see some merchants who were thanked Rudyard for saving them. Rudyard replied, he is an adventurer of the party dead end. Then Eris said, Rudy is smart and an amazing person. She also said that she never had to be afraid because she had Rudy by her side. Meanwhile, the merchant were surprised about Rougeard being a spelled demon, and they learned he is a kind person. Back to Eris, she said she always was relied on Rudy. Then we see Rougeard. He was surprised that no one was afraid of him, and he was grateful for the great time with Rudy. Followed we learned Eris loved Rudy and left him to become stronger because she wants to protect him someday. After that we see Zenoba. He missed his master and hoped to see him someday again. Then we see Geese. He missed Rudy too because he wished Rudy could make some water with his magic. Later we see Tona and her father training swordsmanship, and they were also very grateful to have met Rudy. Afterwards we see adventurers from the demon continent, and they boasted that they knew all of the dead-end members. Then we see Roxy drinking with Kishirika on the demon continent. Roxy was drunken and she fainted out. When she woke up, she saw Kishirika who had no money to pay for the alcohol she had drunk. Roxy paid her bills and she tried to explain to her that she can't just order drinks without money. But she didn't learn anything and offered her to wish something. Suddenly she started again with her nonsense and Roxy thought she is joking. Roxy wished that she should use her skills to locate Rudy and she was able to determine Rudy's whereabouts. In the followed night we see Paul and he was very happy to see his little daughter Aisha. She hugged him and he was reunited with Lilia and Aisha again. Suddenly Lilia started to cry and he was glad that they both are safe. After that, Nora asked about her mom and she was very sad. He said her big brother will find Zenith and they will both come back together. In the meantime, Kishrika told Roxy about the whereabout of Rudy's family and she tried to find Rudy's mother. She couldn't get a good look, but she was able to locate her location on the continent of Begarit in the city Rapan. Followed she used her abilities and said Rudy looks awful. Then Roxy told Alina that Zenith is alive and she wondered why she hasn't contact anyone. Also Roxy said she heard Rudy is depressed, but she believed he will be able to get back up on his own. Rudy felt lonely and he closed his eyes to forget all his worries. Suddenly he saw the memories from his mother's point of view. Rudy was outside training with his father. After coming home he got all dirty from his training. Following this she was sleepy and Rudy told her to go to rest. In addition she was very happy to see Rudy to be grown a nice boy and she said she loves him. As a result Rudy woke up and he knew he needs to find his mother who always loved him. 
Then he went outside and he was ready to find his beloved mother. After that, we see Sylphie woking up in the sky, and she didn't know why she fell from the sky. Meanwhile, a princess was enjoying her tea, and she chose a delicious cheesecake to eat. Following this, her servant Luke complimented her, and she was flattered. Sylphie was still in the sky, and didn't know what to do now. Then Derek scolded Luke and told him to stop trying to seduce Princess Ariel. She wasn't angry, because she is the second princess and will not inherit the throne. Below, we see Sylphie again, and she tried to cushion the fall with a spell. After that, Princess Ariel was attacked by a huge wild boar. The wild boar attacked Luke, and Derek tried to protect the princess. Meanwhile, Sylphie's hair changed color, and Derek faced the wild boar. But Derek was defeated by the huge monster, and Sylphie used a wind spell and landed of the wild boar's head. She defeated the huge monster and fainted out. Followed Princess Ariel saw Derek wasn't alive, and they discovered Sylphie. She was sleeping, and they decided to help her. Later she woke up in the bed of the princess. She was surprised about her new hair color and thought she is dreaming. Then Princess Ariel explained, she is in the royal palace of Asura, and asked where she came from. Sylphie replied she just remembered about falling from the sky, and Ariel told her the bad news. Princess Ariel offered to help Sylphie to find her family, but in the meantime, she needs to take a new face and name. After some days passed, Sylphie got the new name Fitz, and she became one of the personal guard of Princess Ariel. Following this, Luke said after breakfast, she is expected in the Great Hall to talk with Lord Pileman. Later, Princess Ariel greeted all the guests in the Great Hall, and everyone was struck by her beauty. Then Lord Pileman greeted her and said not to forget her appointment in the afternoon. Suddenly her big brother Gable appeared. He was curious about her conversation with Lord Pileman. He didn't like her sister because they just have the same father, but his mother is just a concubine. Then Gable put Lord Pileman in an awkward situation, and he walked away. Additionally, he found his sister's behavior strange and wondered why no one had ever heard about her servant Fitz. Then Luke said that he will leave Sylphie alone for a moment and that she should continue to take care of Princess Ariel. Meanwhile, everyone looked down on Sylphie, who was known as Silent Fitz, and wondered why a nobody was hired as the princess's personal guard. Suddenly Sylphie was exhausted by standing all the time, and a noble was surprised about her hand like a girl. She was nervous and thought her secret might be exposed. The princess then began to sing to distract the nobles. After the song, everyone applauded and they toasted, and Gabble wondered what his sister had planned. Afterwards, Sylphie apologized for making trouble, but Ariel wasn't angry and cheered her up. During the night, Sylphie had a nightmare and dreamed of falling into the darkness. Luke noticed that Sylphie had trouble sleeping. The following morning, Ariel was reported that her brother made surreptitious overtures to all the key groups. She said she have no choice and her only advantage is she is more popular. Afterwards, Ariel praised Sylphie for getting used to the behavior of the nobles. Following this, Sylphie asked her if she has found out anything new about her family and friends. But she replied, it's a little bit difficult because they've been scattered throughout the world. Suddenly Princess Ariel said she can sleep with her during the night, because Luke told her that she often had nightmares. In the afternoon at the theater, Gabble found out that his little sister was plotting a coup d'etat. Gabble understood that he must take countermeasures to thwart their plans. So he asked Darius what he was proposing to him. Darius suggested taking them out with one attack to screw up their plan. Later we see Sylphie entering the bedroom of Princess Ariel. She was confused and Princess Ariel said she is aroused. Following this she pranked Sylphie, and she thought Princess Ariel tried to seduce her. Then Ariel explained that it was just a joke, and that she had no intention of seducing her. She also said that she is very grateful to Sylphie for saving her life. As a result, the two got to know each other better, and she was happy to have met a nice friend. During the night she tried to sleep, but she noticed an unknown person. The assassin tried to murder Ariel, but Sylphie protected the princess with a wind spell. Followed the assassin launched a second attack, and Sylphie dodged her. In addition, she cast powerful wind spells and tried to defeat the enemy. The assassin hid behind a chair and she threw a knife, but Sylphie managed to save Princess Ariel and the enemy appeared behind Sylphie. In the last moment, Sylphie used a strong spell and she defeated the assassin and blasted her out of the room. Sylphie was able to protect the princess, but she was poisoned. So the princess commanded Luke to call a doctor immediately. On the next day, Ariel reported the incident and Sylphie was healthy again. They didn't know who was the culprit, and Lord Pileman suggested first to flee abroad until they find the culprit. Followed, she relieved Sylphie of her duties as her mage bodyguard. Also, she apologized that she couldn't find her family. 
but Sylphie replied that she will accompany Princess Ares, because they are friends. Later they went together to flee abroad until they found the culprit. A few months have passed, and we see the depressed Rudy sitting in a carriage. Suddenly, a woman asked him why he looks so sad. She tried to cheer him up, but Rudy acted rude towards her. A girl got angry because he was so rude to them. The cheeky girl's behavior reminded him of Eris, and he replied that he was looking for his mother. So they learned the reasons why he made a sad face. Suzanne knew he didn't know anything about the Northland, and she explained him about the Northland Kingdom. Later they arrived in a new town, and we see the adventurer party of Suzanne headed to the guildhouse. So Rudy entered an inn, and he booked an Airbnb apartment for several weeks. Following this, he paid the inn owner with a huge amount of money, and he took the room at the third floor. Rudy was exhausted, and he missed Eris, who left him alone. Suddenly he remembered that he was not traveling to get over his heartbreak, and thought about a plan to find his mother. So Rudy visited the guildhouse, and the adults underestimated him. They thought he is a newbie, and looked down on him. Followed Rudy asked a woman to help him disband his party. After that, his party was officially disbanded, and the other adventurers thought his party members got wiped out. Rudy took a job, and the receptionist was worried, because he chose a difficult quest without a party. Suddenly, Rudy felt severe pain, but Suzanne appeared, and his condition became stable again. She heard about his conversation, and she asked why he wanted to take a reckless job. As a result, she took the job with Rudy together to help him. Following this, she invited him to a drink and introduced him to her party. Rudy thought she just pities him, and Sarah didn't like Suzanne's decision to help a rude boy. Then she learned Rudy is a mage, who specialized to support melee fighters. In the meantime, Rudy noticed that Sarah's behavior was similar to that of Eris, and she looked at Rudy in disgust. In the next morning, Rudy got nervous, and he grabbed into his pocket to calm him down. Followed Suzanne and her party appeared. Rudy introduced himself, and she welcomed him on her party. But Rudy acted weird. Then they went off, and he learned Suzanne is the sub-leader of the party counter Arrow. On the way to the mission, all members of the party introduced themselves to Rudy. Suddenly Sarah told him, she will beat him up if he made them trouble on the job. Suzanne stopped her and said she should let it slide because she will work with many other adventurers in the future. So Rudy thought they just using him to teach Sarah and he got the face of Eris in his mind. In the evening Timothy told Rudy the weakness of the luster grizzlies, but he already knew about the weakness of the monster. Then they discussed about the combat strategy and Sarah was still sulking. She thought Rudy is a spoiled kid and didn't like his attitude. The reason was, he wanted to help them in the fight on the middle range, but Sarah refused to work with him together. Later Timothy apologized for Sarah's rudeness, and he tried to cheer him up. After that, we see Sarah and Suzanne located the Luster Grizzlies, and they were ready to fight them. Timothy cast a fire spell and began with his attack. Following this they attacked and Rudy cast a spell to let them slip on the ground. Timothy launched a second attack, and he defeated many of the Luster Grizzlies with ease. Suddenly, Rudy used his Bear Grylls survival skills and was shocked to sense a dangerous noise. They noticed that a big group of Black Grizzlies rushed towards them. Timothy told them to retreat, but Rudy used his Demon Eye sharing in and knew it's too late. However, Rudy didn't want to fight anymore, and he accepted to die against the Grizzlies. Suzanne didn't let him throw his life away, and she protected Rudy. After that they were surrounded, and all adventurer were motivated to fight. They supported each other, and didn't gave up to win against the Black Grizzlies. Suddenly Suzanne was badly injured and Timothy cast a heal spell to treat her injuries. Rudy saw them all fighting and noticed that no one's tried to run away. Then Rudy noticed he is a burden for them, and he realized that they are all doing their best to survive together. Suzanne and her party were all exhausted, and he got the motivation to help them in the fight. So Rudy told them not to worry, and said they should leave the fight to him. Rudy started to cast a strong fire spell, and he managed to create a gigantic fireball. Then he shot his fireball against all grizzlies at once, and he managed to defeat them all. In the followed morning, they dismantled the grizzlies, and they were glad that Rudy saved them. As a result, Rudy managed to find his meaning in life again. Following this, Rudy thanked Suzanne, that she agreed to bring him along. Suzanne and her friends were happy, that they could see Rudy smile again. Back in the guildhouse, the other adventurers looked down on Rudy and didn't accept him. Timothy tried to change the mood of them, so he said he will buy a round for everyone here to celebrate his first job with Rudy. As a result, they welcomed Rudy in the new town, and he was happy to meet new friends. All adventurers celebrated with Rudy and welcomed him in the town. In the evening, he took his treasure out of his pocket, and he remembered something important. 
He understood he didn't lost everything in his life, and he remembered the beautiful day when Roxy took him outside for the first time. This enabled him to overcome his lovesickness, and he decided to work hard again from now on. After a few months passed, we see Rudy running in the morning. He began to build muscle and decided to become strong like Saitama. So Rudy tried the One Punch Man challenge, and his plan was to save his mother as an S-rank hero. In the afternoon, he was ready for the day and went to the guild house. Arriving in the guild, he saw an arrogant adventurer. He accepted a difficult job and looked down on Rudy. However, Rudy didn't care about him, and he found new friends in the new town. After that, he took a new job, and his plan was to making a name for himself in the Northland. Rudy became known as Quagmire, and his reputation in town preceded him. His hard work was paid off, and he hoped to find his mother soon. Followed, he started his day clearing the city of snow and cleaning the streets. Later, Rudy healed an injured girl and saw the bright side of life. Sarah saw him doing good deeds and went to her job. After this, he went home and he met Sarah. She asked him if he wants to join the job, but Rudy knew to team up with the counter arrow party doesn't do much for his goal. Sarah said he didn't need to join them if he didn't want to team up. Then Suzanne appeared and he accepted to join them on the next job. Rudy and his friends went to the Gala Ruins and he was surprised about the huge fortress. Following this, Rudy could prevent an accident and he saved Sarah in time. Rudy got Riz Aura and she wasn't angry at him that he touched her boobs. Afterwards, they found a snowdrake scale, and they went down to gather up all snowdrake scales. Rudy knew they were in the snowdrake territory, and he felt like he recognized that statue from somewhere. He realized the statue looked similar like Kishirika. Suddenly, many snowdrakes appeared, and Rudy warned all of his friends. The snowdrakes rushed towards them, and Rudy created a huge earth wall to block the path. Unfortunately, the monsters managed to get past his wall, and he cast an ice spell to defeat them. His attack failed and he was glad that his friends managed to escape. Sarah saved Rudy with her arrow, and Timothy launched strong fire spells against them. Also, Suzanne showed up, and she fought with Patrick the Snowdrakes. Rudy was glad that they didn't let him down, and Sarah told him to help them in the fight. Suddenly, another adventurer appeared, and he slayed down many Snowdrakes with his insane sword skills. They managed to survive with the help of the strong adventurer. After that, Timothy introduced his party, but he was punched in his face. The arrogant adventurer was angry and thought they tried to swipe his party's prey. She was angry because they were doing jobs in different places, but Timothy tried to calm her down and wanted to clear up the misunderstanding. Followed Timothy managed to clear up the misunderstanding with the rude guy. Sol apologized for punching him and allowed them to claim one of the snowdrakes. Back in the guild, they celebrated together and Rudy was happy about the invitation of Sarah. Rudy was grateful that they didn't let him down in the ruins. After that, Suzanne teased Sarah a little bit, and she knew Sarah got a crush on Rudy. After that, Rudy wondered if his father was like adventurer Sol when he was younger. Suddenly, Sol appeared, and he was very drunk. He apologized for insulting them and knew he had made mistakes. Then being drunk, he started saying all his thoughts out loud, and he insulted Rudy for lacking self-confidence. Rudy tried to ignore him, but his words hurts his feelings. He realized the guy wasn't wrong, and he apologized for being an eyesore. Suddenly Sol got more angry because Rudy turned down the rewards to get his name out there. He said they all needs money to live and his friend tried to stop him. In the followed morning, Rudy met the rude guy in the guild house again. He asked Rudy if he hunted for scraps again, but Rudy replied he had his reasons. Following this, his friends entered the guild house and they looked sad. Rudy learned Mimi died and Sarah was separated in the last job. Timothy was ashamed and Suzanne said that if they had kept looking for her, they would have died too. As a result, Rudy decided to find Sarah, and he packed all his stuff to go outside. Rudy stopped the blizzard with a spell, and he went off. On the way to the Trier Forest, he remembered the rude guy's words, and asked himself if he was happy doing good deeds for nothing in return. On the way to save Sarah, he defeated many monsters. Rudy was shocked to see Mimi's corpse, and he wanted to bring the leftover body of Mimi back to his friends. Suddenly he saw an earring of Sarah, and he thought she was dead too. Rudy burned the corpses down and he was attacked by a monster. However, Rudy dodged the attack and he found Sarah, who was alive. He tried to save her, and a tree cast powerful spells against Rudy. So Rudy jumped into the sea with Sarah, and he was able to save Sarah. Rudy found a cave and he used his healing spells to treat her injuries. Followed Sarah noticed that he can see her underwear and she got nervous. Then Rudy asked if something is wrong, and she replied everything is fine. In addition, he told Sarah that Mimi died. 
On the next morning, they headed back and Sarah told Rudy she was glad that Rudy came to rescue her. Arriving in the town, her party members were surprised to see Sarah. They learned Rudy sneaked out to save Sarah in the forest. Suzanne was angry because his actions were reckless and she was concerned for him. Then she thanked him and Timothy cried tears of joy because he risked his life to save one of his beloved party member. In the following weeks, we see Rudy toasting with his friends. Since that day, he had been working with Counter Arrow almost constantly. His reputations grew in the city and he got in the time closer to Sarah. Sarah asked him about his parents and she learned that a female mage was Rudy's tutor. Rudy noticed that Sarah was jealous by hearing him talking about girls. Suddenly, she changed the topic and asked Rudy if he wants to accompany her by buying a new knife. Rudy was happy to go shopping with her. Meanwhile, Suzanne and Timothy smiled and noticed too that Sarah got a crush on Rudy. In the following day, Rudy had a date with Sarah and they started looking around town. Then they went to visit a blacksmith shop and she asked Rudy for his advice. Sarah found two daggers that matched each other and showed it Rudy. As a result, Rudy bought her a new dagger and she was very grateful about his gift. In the evening, they drank booze together in a tavern and Sarah noticed her jacket got a little tight. Rudy blushed and Sarah said she is also very tight underneath. So Rudy activated his riz power and he used the moment to rizzing into her pants. Then Rudy thought he screwed up, but she was happy about his try to shot his load. She told him that she wants to see his room. Rudy was surprised that he could seduce Sarah and he said he will show her his room. Following this, they went to his room and Rudy lit a candle to set the mood. Then Sarah said she is very grateful because she would have died if he hadn't come looking for her. Rudy got permission to have fun with her and he started right away. Rudy showed Sarah his strong muscles that he had built with the One Punch Man challenge and he was ready to make with her a baby. Suddenly Rudy realized something went wrong because his sausage wasn't ready. He was stunned and didn't know why his body didn't react to that shorty in front of him. As a result, Sarah was ashamed and her feelings got hurt because she thought she was the reason. She left his room and Rudy went down to drink booze. Suddenly Saul appeared and he made fun of him to see Rudy had an unlucky day. Rudy was angry about his words and he punched Saul. So Rudy asked him if he is happy to see him suffer and he didn't stop to punch Saul. Saul learned that Rudy had his own problems and always faked a smile so no one would worry. Then he cried in front of everyone and Saul apologized for treating him every day like scum. He tried to cheer him up and he learned Rudy was dumped by a girl. Following this, Rudy told Saul about his story with Eris. Saul learned that Eris ditched him and he couldn't understand why Eris left him. As a result, Rudy thought he must have been bad in bed and his new friend tried to cheer him up. Followed Saul got an idea to solve his problem with his sausage and he was sure that he can fix him. Saul told him to follow him and he showed him a paradise only for men. However, Rudy arrived in a place and saw many beautiful girls. Then he went to a room and Elise welcomed him and was happy about his visit. Elise told him that he healed her little sister last winter and he remembered about the little girl who he helped. After that, she told him to enjoy the fun with her and Rudy was very nervous. Elise started to strip off and she told him to relax on her bed because she will serve him tonight. A short time later, Rudy reported that his hot dog was overcooked and Elise apologized that she couldn't solve his problem. Then she said it seemed that Rudy was well frightened of women. Sol understood that his problem isn't easy to solve and he tried to cheer him up. In the followed morning, Sol told him he will help him with his sausage problem and he gave him the advice not to rush. The reason was rushing in blind just gets more people hurt and he was able to motivate Rudy. Afterwards, Sol asked about Sarah and he explained to Rudy that she lied to him because her pride was hurt. Then he suggested Rudy to talk that out and he replied he will see her anyways. Rudy talked a lot of nonsense and his friend tried to stop him. The reason was Sarah heard all of his awful words. She slapped him and said he is the worst. So Sarah never wanted to see him again and Suzanne told him that was way out of line. Rudy was ashamed and Sol stopped him to do stupid things. After that Sol thought it will help him if he visit his family. However, Sol learned his home is far away and he got another idea. As a result, he invited Rudy to accompany him to his next job in a labyrinth. He said he didn't like his fake smile, but he didn't want to let him down. Rudy noticed Sol is a good guy and he was grateful about his offer. He accepted his offer and was ready to accompany him to a new adventure. After that, we see Alina, who was searching for Rudy. She gathered information and she used her seduction skills to find his location. In the followed weeks, we see Rudy with the adventurer group of Saul in the mountains. Rudy used his earth magic to locate the monsters. 
he reported Sul that eight grizzlies rushed towards them with an enormous speed. Then Rudy trapped the grizzlies with a mud spell and Sul commanded his friends to attack. They slayed down the grizzlies with ease and all monsters were wiped out instant. Suddenly another monster appeared and one of them reported that the grizzlies were running from a red dragon. Sol asked Rudy how he couldn't sense the red dragon and he replied the clouds covered his view. Following this, the dragon attacked them and Sol told them to retreat. Rudy used spells to create smoke and he was attacked by the red dragon with his breath of fire. He managed to dodge the attack and cast a strong water spell. After that, Rudy attacked him with a strong earth spell and he managed to trap the strong dragon with a mud spell. As a result, he ended the life of the dragon with a huge rock, and everyone were amazed to see the power of Rudy. Back in the town, Sol invited Rudy to join his party, but he refused, because he will soon move to the next country to find his mother. In the evening, he prays to the panties of Roxy and went to sleep. The next morning, Rudy trained and completed the One Punch Man challenge every day, which allowed him to build a lot of muscles. After that, he ate his oatmeal with his whey of my protein. Suddenly, he saw a guy who thought he is the next Chris Brown, but everyone complained about his song. Out of nowhere, Alina appeared in the tavern, and she said he finally found him. Suddenly, Alina licked her lips, and he thought the woman is after his bodybuilding body, that he trained every day for the Arnold physics. Following this, she told him she was in the party of his father Paul, and she's a friend of Roxy. Rudy was surprised about the news, and Alina whispered, she heard about his heroic deed to slay down a strong dragon. She understood why Roxy boasted about him, and she got a liking on Rudy. She planned to play with Rudy, and she found the necklace, which was a gift of his childhood friend. Suddenly, she showed him her own necklace, and she said, she stopped because she didn't want to end up Paul's daughter-in-law. Then Rudy learned she wanted to tell him good news. Rudy learned about the whereabout of his mother, and he knew traveling to a new continent will be difficult. So he decided to stay in this country, because Roxy formed with Paul a party to find his mother. Later, Alina greeted Rudy, and he noticed a guy was behind her. He learned Alina belongs to the streets, because she made love with every man in the town. A few days later he hoped that his problem with little Rudy could be solved, but his try failed, and he was very depressed about his situation. In the followed morning he met his friend Sol, and he apologized, but Rudy told him Alina isn't his girl. Sol told him he had a lot of fun with her, and Rudy knew she seduced a bunch of guys a few days before. Then they went down and ate lunch together, but Rudy got a little bit jealous. He wondered how she can keep a harem of dudes and still stay out of trouble. Following this, Rudy learned she used the power of money to stay out of troubles. A few weeks passed and winter fell on. Alina showed him a letter, and he got an invitation of the University of Magic. Renoa University of Magic was interested in Rudy and invited him as a special student. So Rudy thought about the letter, but he needs to figure out if it's legit. In the next morning, he asked his friend Conrad about his experience in the Renoa University. As a result, he learned that the school wasn't a total scam. Also, Conrad learned Rudy is a gray rat, and he wondered why he is doing solo as an adventurer. He apologized about his question, and Rudy remembered about his original goal. Suddenly, Alina showed up and tried to seduce her next guy. She told him to accept the invitation to the magic school. Afterwards, Rudy met Man God again, and he was surprised to see him after two years. Mangod asked him if he is happy that his mother was found by Roxy. Then Mangod started to tease Rudy and he said his spellcasting is only a little better than a few years ago. He gave Rudy the advice to visit the Ranoa Magic School and said he will regret it if he didn't accept the invitation. Rudy wasn't sure, but Mangod told him he will find in the school a solution for his sausage problem. Later Rudy woke up and he saw a naked Alina sleeping in his bed. He realized he needs to solve his problem and got the intention to travel to the Renoa University of Magic School. In the followed morning, he said goodbye to his friend, and his best friend sulked. Rudy was grateful that Sol had always taken care of him in recent years, and he wished him good luck to find a way for solving his big problem in his pants. Then Rudy went off to his new journey, and he looked forward to learn more about magic. In the days that followed, he traveled to the city of Renoa, and didn't knew that he would soon be meeting familiar faces. In the followed months, Rudy finally arrived in the city of Renoa and he intended to meet the person who invited him. Alina wanted to join him because she had developed an interest in boys his age. On the trip with Alina, he learned she was cursed and she would die unless she sleeps with men on the regular. So they went to the Magic University of Renoa and Genius introduced himself and told him he is a teacher of the school. 
Genius was surprised to see Rudy and Rudy told him that Roxy gave him the advice to enroll in the school. Following this, he said he'd like to learn and accomplish a number of things in the school. Genius asked him to participate in a little test, and he told Rudy more about the magical school Ranoa. Genius found out that Rudy was interested in healing spells, and he admired him for his great attitude. After that, Genius said, he would like Rudy to demonstrate his spell casting without incantations. Rudy learned they had another caster, who was able to use wordless magic. Rudy introduced himself, and he didn't know that Fitz was his childhood friend Sylphie. Then he was told that his test will be a mock duel, without incantations against Fitz. Rudy saw the wand of Fitz and he found it suspicious. Suddenly Fitz tried to launch an attack, but he was able to stop her spell with his observation hockey. As a result, he ended the battle in a short moment, and Fitz was confused. So Rudy explained, he used a spell called Disturb Magic, and he noticed all students were staring at him. So Rudy thanked Fitz for letting him win, and was surprised by Fitz's soft hands. Later he was accepted as a special student, and he had many privileges. Rudy was happy that he was exempt from teaching as a special student, and Alina visited him. She asked Rudy for his opinion on her school outfit because she intended to seduce many boys. Following this, the student council appeared, and all students admired them. Alina teased Rudy a little bit because he won last time against Fitz. Then Ariel started her speak, and she introduced herself to the new students. She welcomed them to the school, and Rudy was stunned by her charisma. However, she wished everyone to have fun in the University of Renoa, and Rudy noticed that Fitz glared at him. After the ceremony, Rudy was on his way to find the classroom for special students. Suddenly, Zenoba recognized his master, and he ran towards Rudy. He was very happy to see his beloved master, and Rudy was scared by his pupil. Followed a girl named Linnea said she didn't like him. Rudy introduced himself, and he bowed to her. As a result, she liked his behavior to treating her like an important person. He learned that Linnea is the eldest daughter of Gaius, and he was surprised about the news. After that, he noticed another Beastmen people, and her name was Persena. She had no interest in Rudy, and ignored him. Then Rudy chose a seat, and he was approached by Cliff, who described himself as a magical genius. Cliff told him he is able to use barrier magic, and Rudy was surprised that Cliff knew about his swordsman skills. Suddenly, Rudy learned that he was befriended with Eris, and he asked about her. Zenoba noticed that Rudy was in a bad mood, and he changed the topic. Zenoba said that he got another classmate named Silent, but she spent all her time in her laboratory. Later, Rudy walked through the school and he looked around. He went to the school library and tried to find a solution for his problem to make something big. Following this, Rudy met Fitz and he apologized because of his actions caused Fitz to lose his face. Fitz wasn't angry at him and she learned that the Mana Sister sent him to the Demon Continent. Then he told Fitz that he enabled the school to find his missing friend. Sylphie left him and she didn't reveal him her true identity, but she suggested him great books about teleportation. In the afternoon, Rudy had lunch with Zenoba and they became good friends. Suddenly, Luke appeared and he looked down on Rudy. He said his name is Luke Notos Greyrat, and Rudy was surprised about his name. Following this, Zenoba explained Luke's situation in the school, and Rudy learned more about the story of Princess Ariel. So Zenoba said Luke and Fitz are the princess's bodyguards, and they are both very talented. In the evening, he went back to his room and he found a white tissue. Rudy realized that it wasn't a tissue and he wanted to return the panties to the owner. Suddenly, a girl called him an underwear thief and she caused a big misunderstanding. He was surrounded by many girls and a gorilla girl was very angry. Rudy tried to clear up the misunderstanding, but the girls didn't believe him. In the last moment, Sylphie appeared and she said it was her fault because she dropped the panty of Ariel when she was hanging them out to dry. Sylphie tried to talk with the girls, but the ugly gorilla girl didn't let it slide. Then Sylphie threatened Goliad with her wand, and Rudy was spared. After that, Sylphie healed up Rudy, and she apologized, because she dropped those panties. Rudy wasn't angry, and thanked Fitz, who cleared up the misunderstanding. Suddenly Fitz said it feels strange, hearing him thank her. He was confused, but he felt something familiar by talking with Fitz, and blushed. A few weeks passed, and Rudy started like every day his morning routine. Also, he noticed that Fitz trained in the early morning, too. After his workout, he tried to improve his skill, because Zenoba begged him to teach him figure-making. Then he ate lunch with his friend Zenoba, and he saw Alina. She spends all her time to seduce guys, and Rudy was glad that she had fun in the school. In the afternoon, he took basic classes in healing and barrier magic. Rudy enjoyed the time to learn more about magic. 
When he is not in class, Rudy always visit the school library, and he researched more about teleportation. So we saw Rudy's daily cycle, and before going to sleep, he always relaxed in his bed. In the days that followed, Rudy was in the library, and Sylphie appeared and asked if she could sit with him. She asked how his research is going, and he noticed about her book about teleportation. Rudy learned that someone he knew went missing in the Mana disaster too. She told him he didn't need to worry, because she recently learned the person is alive. Then she asked Rudy that she'd like to help him investigate the mass teleportation. Rudy was grateful, and he blushed by seeing Fitz smile. He was surprised that he was into man's, because he didn't know about Fitz's true identity. In the evening Rudy thought he got closer to Fitz and he asked Fitz about his sunglasses. So Fitz replied that he plans to be a rapper, and she panicked that Rudy would find out her true identity. Then Rudy wondered why he was called the Silent Fitz. Sylphie avoid the topic because she didn't want that Rudy find out about her identity. After that, Rudy asked Fitz about her ability to cast without incantations. She replied a long time ago her master rescued him and taught her everything. Then Rudy saw Fitz smile and he couldn't understand why his heart beat faster. Rudy knew he wasn't into men, but he just followed the advice of man-god. Back in the dormitory, Rudy was asked by his friend for advice. He learned that Zenoba is a figure geek who took things too far. Rudy told Zenoba to wait longer because he promised him to teach him making figures. Following this started with his first lesson and Zenoba failed to create figures with magic. As a result he was sad and Rudy cheered him up. He told Zenoba that he will show him another option to create action figures. Zenoba was happy about the second option but he learned he is hopeless. The reason of his failure was his super strength and he was sad that he couldn't sculpt like his master. In the followed morning he told Fitz about Zenoba's problem. Fitz understood that making figures is very difficult and tried to find a solution. Fitz got an idea and told them the nobles solve the problems with servants. Following this, Rudy got the idea to find a good servant for Zenoba, and Fitz asked Rudy if he could accompany him. In the afternoon, Fitz introduced himself to Zenoba, and he talked a lot of nonsense. Rudy stopped him and told Zenoba to show Fitz proper respect. Then they went off and looked around the town together. Followed, they found a shop where they could buy servants for the problem of Zenoba. Fitz was surprised that they were naked, and Rudy noticed that Fitz is a virgin. He told Fitz that he will be gained experience someday too. Suddenly Zenoba disturbed his talk and said he needs to find a servant who is able to cast magic. Fitz told them they should pick a child because there are many advantages with a young age. Also Rudy learned that he got so much mana because he started using magic at a young age. They then asked the dealer if he had a dwarf that was five years old. He couldn't find a five years old one, but he found a six years old dwarf. As a result, Rudy and his friends asked the merchant to let them see the dwarf girl. The merchant led them to the child, and Rudy tried to ignore the terrible circumstances. After that, Sylphie noticed the girl was in a bad condition and she healed her. Rudy went to the girl and introduced himself with the dwarf god language. She didn't react it and Rudy learned she was in despair because she had the hopeless look of someone who longs for death. Rudy knew his eyes looked the same like hers a few years ago, and he asked the girl if she wants to die. Suddenly she reacted to his words, and he offered her to save the girl. In the last moment she replied, she don't want to die. As a result, Rudy decided to save the girl, and he bought her. After that, they bought her dinner, and Sylphie asked about her name. The girl replied she doesn't have a name, and Sylphie remembered dwarves don't get proper names until they turn seven. Then they tried to come up with a cute name for the girl, and Zenoba suggested a silly name. Rudy got a perfect name and asked if the girl liked her new name, Juliet. She was glad about her name and smiled. Then Rudy decided that Julie would live with Zenoba, and during the day, he taught her magic. Then Rudy was glad to see Julie happy with her new life, and he smiled. In the followed morning, we see Sylphie woke up, and she brushed her teeth. After that, she went out, and she almost forget to wear her cap. Sylphie started her day by running around Sharia, which was the city of magic. So she tried her best, because she didn't want to lag behind Rudy. After that, we see Sylphie in the magic class, and she was bored because Rudy had already taught her about magic. Despite everything, school was fun for Sylphie, and she was happy to see the hard-working Ariel studying. In the evening, Sylphie showed her friends the shortcut that she discovered. Luke said the town Sharia was built like a maze, and Ariel was surprised and he said he just quoting a girl that he dated recently. Following this, Sylphie remembered that Rudy was a notos too, and wondered if he is chasing after girls. During the night, Sylphie thought of Rudy and felt that he was the only thing she could think about. She wondered what kind of relationship she wanted to have with Rudy, and she realized that she loves Rudy. 
A month passed since Julie arrived, and Rudy taught her to cast earth spells. After that we see Julie manage to cast a spell without incantations. They were happy to see Julie growing up, and Rudy showed her many new things. Also Rudy learned that Zenoba took good care of her. In addition, Julie became Rudy's apprentice, and Zenoba's junior disciple. In the afternoon, Zenoba shared his passion about making figures. He showed Julie his beloved Rydard action figure, and Rudy asked him about the Roxy figure. Suddenly he got goosebumps and knew he was about to hear a lecture from his master. Zenoba showed Rudy the figure of Roxy, and Rudy was stunned to see his Roxy figure destroyed into many pieces. Rudy was angry and couldn't believe that his beloved Roxy figure was destroyed. So Rudy thought Zenoba was his enemy and asked Zenoba to explain why his doll was broken. Zenoba explained that the Doldia girls were the culprits and he cried. Rudy learned that the Doldia girls played with his toy and broke it. He was furious and he intended to take revenge on the two girls. In the followed day we see Linia and Persena on the campus and Rudy waited for them. They looked down on them and Linia insulted Zenoba. Zenoba got angry but Rudy said he will handle it and he insulted them back. Then Linia said she is busy and said she will let it slide this time. Rudy provoked them and Linia was furious. Following this, Rudy used his observation hockey and he prepared countermeasures against them. He defeated Linia with a strong kick and knocked her out with ease. Meanwhile, Persena tried to escape and Zenoba couldn't catch her. So Rudy used a mud spell and he knocked the second girl out with a little rock too. Then they tied up the two girls and Rudy brought them to his room. Followed the both girls woke up and they were confused. Rudy planned to do a little experiment and he grabbed Persena's boobs. The reason was he wondered if he can solve his sausage problem. It didn't work and he began with the main topic. Persena said they haven't done anything to him, but Rudy showed his destroyed Roxy figure. Then Rudy said they destroyed his goddess and he showed them his treasure. Linia and Persena saw the scared faces of Rudy's friends and they understood they are in danger. As a result, Persena said Linia stomped on his creepy figure and said it was her idea to destroy his figure. Following this, they started to blame each other and Rudy said they both are guilty. Linia threatened him that her father would punish him if he did something funny. At that moment, Rudy remembered that he was innocently punished and asked if he should do the same to them. They were scared and Persena said she don't care what happens to Linia and asked him to spare her. In the end, Rudy said they need to put the figure back together like it was and the girls were confused. In the next morning, Silphy learned that Rudy and Zenoba had locked up some girls. Rudy said he didn't do anything sexual and asked Fitz about a punishment that won't leave them holding a grudge or seeking revenge. Later they went to see the girls and they asked Rudy to forgive them. They peed on themselves and said they are very hungry. So Rudy and Fitz cleaned the pants of the both girls and let them go. Following this, Linia said she will do everything he says, but nothing that would make babies and Persuna said he is allowed to touch the boobs of Linia. Suddenly, the two girls insulted Fitz and Rudy knew they needs a punishment. As a result, Fitz painted their faces with a magical ink and said the right incantation make it permanent. Fitz told them, if they don't listen Rudy, she will cast a spell and tattoo them for life. So they got along with each other, and Linia asked Rudy about his fighting skills. Linia was surprised that her Aunt Jelaine taught him to fight. Afterwards they said goodbye and apologized that they destroyed his doll. Then Rudy learned that Fitz lied and he just used cheap paints for magic circles. However, Fitz asked him about his treasure and he almost saw the panty of Roxy. Rudy could change the topic and Fitz discovered his pillow. Suddenly Fitz asked Rudy if he wants to see his face, but she didn't have the courage to show him his true identity. Sylphie wished him a good night, and Rudy asked himself if he was into boys. He wondered what had happened if Fitz showed him his face. A few days later Rudy did kinky things in the class, and Linia told him to keep his hands out of her skirt. He had a lot of fun with his classmates, and Cliff felt disturbed. So Rudy was scolded by Cliff, and he apologized for disturbing his studies. Later, Cliff walked home and he saw a beautiful woman sitting by the window. He blushed and fell in love with her instantly. After that, we see Rudy. He noticed that Cliff was bullied by other students of the school. He stopped them and they all were feared by seeing Quagmire. Following, he asked Cliff if he is okay and he thanked Rudy for his help. Rudy wondered why does Cliff even hate him in the first place, but he guessed it's not a big deal. In the next morning, he started his day like always, and Cliff spied on him. Suddenly, Cliff wanted to talk to him, and he asked for advice about a girl he liked. Rudy was confused and didn't know what he wanted from him. Then he learned Cliff got a crush on Alina, and he thought he just made jokes. Cliff was serious and told him that he fell in love with her. He also asked Rudy if he could introduce Alina to him. 
In the followed day, he asked Fitz about advice and he was glad that Rudy just helped someone else. Rudy told Fitz the problem, and Sylphie was worried that Rudy got feelings for Alina too. He replied he got no interest in Alina, and he learned that Fitz had a crush on someone too. Following this, Rudy introduced Cliff to his friend Alina, and he was prepared if she reject him. Cliff introduced himself, and she asked him what brings him to see her. Then she took Rudy to the side and asked him why he brought her such a gullible boy. Alina said she can't stick to just one partner, and Rudy told her to turn him down. Following this, Rudy left them alone, and he thought that Alina will reject him. In the followed morning, Rudy was shocked to see them become a couple. Cliff got NPC Riz, and Alina told him that Cliff's Riz level is over 9,000. So they both enjoyed their couple life, and Linnea was disgusted by seeing them. Rudy realized that Cliff had infinite NPC Riz, and he hoped to cure his problem soon as possible. A few weeks later, the beast men and women fought duels in the fall, and the winners lead their families. He knew it's the Doldia tribe's version of a marriage proposal. Then he arrived in class, and Linnea and Persena were hiding because they get inundated with suitor in the form of challengers. They wrote him a note and wished him to have fun. Suddenly, Rudy was challenged by a beast, Men, and Rudy rejected the proposal duel because he wasn't into guys. Suddenly he learned Persena caused him the troubles and told all challenger that he is her boss. In the library, Fitz learned that the beast men challenged them all and his two classmates caused him the trouble. Then Rudy learned one challenger is a girl, and he wondered why Fitz was in a bad mood. So he went outside to see after Fitz, but all challengers were defeated. The demon was glad to see Rudy, and he told him he is the fiancé of Kisharika. As a result, he was challenged to a duel by Demon King Badigadi. Demon King Badigadi said he heard a lot about Rudy, because Kisharika said he is very strong. Following this, Rudy learned that Mangod caused him all the troubles. Rudy asked if Badigadi knew something about the name Mangod, so Badigadi learned Rudy met him in his dreams, but he knew nothing about the name Mangod. Suddenly he started to laugh, and he forced Rudy to laugh with him. After that, Fitz brought him his magic wand and he told Badi that he is ready for the fight. Badi said he will spare his life, but in exchange he wants to see Rudy's strongest magic attack in the duel. However, Rudy accepted his condition, and he prepared his strongest earth spell. He created a dangerous rock that spun at inhuman speed, and Rudy asked Badi if he is ready. Then Rudy launched his attack and he destroyed the whole body of Badi and thought he is dead. All students were shocked and Badi was alive. He regenerated himself with ease. After that, he graduated Rudy and told everyone that he is the winner of the fight. Suddenly he punched Rudy in the face and Fitz healed Rudy's injuries. Rudy thanked Fitz for healing his injury and he was happy that the day ended. A few months later, Persena thanked Rudy for protecting them and she allowed Rudy to feel up Linnea's boobs as his reward. Suddenly they heard someone laugh, and the demon king Badigadi appeared in the class. A few months later, we see Persena, who was teasing Rudy with a piece of chicken leg. Sylphie thought that Rudy was into this type of girl, and she was sad. Later, Princess Ariel tried to cheer her up, and said that although she felt strongly for Rudy, he didn't even notice her. Sylphie told her friends that she hadn't told Rudy about her true identity because she was afraid that Rudy might have forgotten her so Ariel suggested that Sylphie be entrusted with the matter of Rudy. In the afternoon, Rudy studied about the teleportation disaster in the library, and he found out a lot of interesting information. He asked Fitz for advice about experts on summoning, but Fitz was depressed. Suddenly, Fitz said that he knew a summoning specialist, and he was sure that Rudy knew the person's name too. Rudy learned about the special student Silent Seven Star, and he remembered that Zenoba said she is a weird person. After that, he decided to visit Silent in her room, and he thought that she is just a normal NPC character like the others. At that moment, Rudy was shocked to see Orstad's partner, and he ran away. Silent told Rudy that he was being rude, and he fainted from fear. Later he woke up, and he told Fitz that he had a scary dream about a masked girl who planned to kill him. Silent replied that she saved him last time, and he thought that Orstad planned to kill him a second time. Sylphie was worried about Rudy, and she learned that he recalled the memories of the dragon god who killed him last time. However, Silent was surprised about his visit, and she showed him a letter with Japanese kanjis. She asked him a few questions on Japanese, and he told her that he wasn't one of the written names. So Rudy learned that Silent was the girl he tried to save from a truck, and she introduced herself as Nanahoshi Shizuka. She thought that Rudy was from Europe, but she wondered why he could speak Japanese. Nanahoshi asked him about his real name, and he introduced himself as Rudy. 
Then she realized that he was scared at her, and she told him that she is on his side. In addition, she planned to work with him, because she got the intention to return to their old world. Suddenly Rudy said that he didn't want to go back to their old world, because he loves the world in which he was reborn. At that moment Sylphie felt left out, and she asked the two of them if they could speak in a language that she understood. Silent learned that Rudy was reincarnated, and she said that she was more or less teleported into this world. Rudy also said that he died after a truck accident, and he learned more about Orstad. She said she found him strange, and asked Orstad to save his life. Then Rudy learned that Silent was looking for two Japanese using teleportation circles. Silent told him more about her journey that she tried to find a way home. Also she said she met a person who said she may have been summoned into this world by someone. Following this, Silent said that her search for a solution had failed, and she suspected that Rudy was also summoned into the world. Rudy wanted to know who her informant was, and she replied that she promised to keep his name secret. Afterwards, Rudy discovered the magic circle that Silent was studying. He learned that she has no magical powers because she was teleported to this world. As a result, Rudy began to trust Silent, and she wanted to know his opinion on how he thinks about the world. Following this, Silent offered Rudy a deal because she needs his magic, and he wants knowledge about the world. Later she told them that she had teleported into the world five years ago. She said that she most likely caused the teleportation disaster. Suddenly Fitz became angry, and he attacked Silent because he couldn't forgive her for causing the disaster. Rudy tried to calm Fitz down, because he misunderstood her words. At that moment, Fitz couldn't believe that Rudy wasn't angry. Rudy said that she was just a victim of the disaster, and Fitz apologized to Silent. After that, Silent said that he didn't understand the accident either, and Rudy remembered that Mangod claimed Orstad was the culprit. After that, Silent said that she didn't understand the accident either, and Rudy remembered that Mangod claimed Orstad was the culprit. In the evening, he returned to the school dormitory with Fitz. Rudy told Fitz that he trusted Silent, and he was grateful that Fitz was concerned about him. The real reason Fitz asked him about Silent was because she's worried that Rudy will fall in love with Silent. The next morning, Sylphie looked out the window, and she saw a couple in love. Then Sylphie feared that Rudy had no feelings for her, and she was still afraid to tell Rudy about her true identity. She also realized that Silent and Rudy shared a bond, and she thought that Rudy had a crush on Silent. As a result, Sylphie was jealous of her because the two of them spent a lot of time together every day. She didn't know what to do, and she wished she had the courage to tell him the truth. A few months passed, and Rudy started his day with a workout. Body helped him with his workout, and he asked Rudy why did he desire strength. Then Body told his friend that there are more important things in life, like the love of women. After his workout session, he eats breakfast and goes to his class. Rudy realized that since the fight against Demon King Body, many students feared him. Later, Persena and Linnea came to cheer him up, but instead the two girls argued. Additionally, they said that he could run this school because he defeated Fitz. In class, Cliff started asking him if he had any knowledge about curses, so Rudy began to tell the story of the spelled demons, which his good friend Ruger told him. Cliff was grateful for the great story, and they were reprimanded for being disruptive in class. After class, he always had lunch with Zanoba and Julie. Then we see Body, who showed up and he was drinking delicious booze. Julie and Zanoba were interested in his drink, so they were offered booze, and Julie was very happy about it. They had a lot of fun together, and Rudy told Zenoba that he still had a lecture. In the afternoon, Rudy always spent time helping Silent with her research on teleportation circle. Then Rudy managed to teleport a feather from a magical creature to the room, but Silent said that the experiment failed. However, Rudy learned that her goal is to summon a person with a teleportation circle. He was worried that it might cause another mass teleportation disaster, but Silent assured him that she did not plan to cause a disaster. She said that the reason she starts with the basics is to understand the theory about teleportation magic. Following this, Rudy asked her more about teleportation magic and she threw at him a book. In the evening, Rudy always spent time teaching Julie magic and they always made figures together. He noticed that Julie is very talented and he enjoyed his time with Zenoba. Rudy hasn't been visiting the library lately and he still hasn't found a solution to his problem. In the following days, Rudy received a letter from his friend, Saul Goodman. He wrote that he was near his school and invited Rudy to lunch. However, Rudy met his friends in a tavern and Saul was happy to see him again after all this time. They talked about their adventures together and he was surprised that Alina had a boyfriend. She said she will never part with Cliff and they enjoyed lunch together. Unfortunately, Saul was called on a mission and Rudy thanked him for his invitation to lunch. 
Later, Alina said that she was going on an adventure trip with Cliff, and Alina offered him to join them. He politely declined and said that they should stay away from dangerous places. So Rudy went back to school, and on the way he looked around the city. Suddenly he saw Fitz, and he greeted his schoolmates. He noticed that Fitz looked different, and Luke changed the subject. So Rudy thought that maybe his cousin was into boys and he wouldn't let him talk to Fitz because they were on a date. Luke was just trying to keep Sylphie's secret, because he knew that she hadn't told Rudy about her true identity yet. Rudy was curious, and he was sad that Fitz was trying to avoid him. On the way back to school, Rudy wondered why Fitz didn't want to talk to him. As a result, he tried to find his friend Zenoba to talk with him about his problem. Unfortunately, Zenoba wasn't at school, and he decided to go to the library. When he arrived at the library, he met Fitz, and he behaved normally again. Rudy asked Fitz why he was ignored earlier. So Fitz replied that he wasn't allowed to speak while on duty. Then Fitz apologized for not being allowed to answer him and Rudy thought that Fitz hated him. Fitz replied that he could never hate him, and Rudy blushed by his smile. In the evening he made his figures and thought about Fitz. Rudy realized that he really liked Fitz, because Fitz had helped him all the time when he was struggling in school. In the followed morning, Fitz walked around the school with Ariel. He saw Fitz's cute smile, and he was shocked that he was into boys. As a result, he decided to go to the principal and he planned to find out more information about Fitz. The headmaster confirmed that Fitz was a boy, but Rudy suspected that Fitz was actually a girl. Later Rudy was deep in thought and Fitz appeared behind him. He was startled, and they both fell to the ground. Meanwhile, Rudy learned that Fitz was actually a girl, and he denied it. Suddenly, Rudy realized that his sausage was working after touching Fitz, and he wondered why Fitz tried to hide his gender. Then he understood that Fitz is the solution to cure his sausage problem, and he planned to download the Mickey Mouse hot dog song to celebrate his success. In the following days we see Rudy tired because he couldn't sleep after his success with his sausage problem. Then he met his cousin, and Luke said that he would like to talk to him, but Rudy replied that he didn't know anything. In addition, he mentioned that he is not involved with the main family and had no intention of causing problems for him. In the afternoon, Sylphie was called to Princess Ariel's meeting room. Ariel told her that she knows what happened to the two of them. She also knows that Rudy is a trustworthy person, and asked her what Sylphie planned to do. Additionally, she suggested that Sylphie should reveal her identity to her beloved childhood friend, and Ariel tried to support her. Ariel knew Sylphie was shy and she tried to encourage her friend to show Rudy her feelings. Following this, she asked Sylphie to reveal her identity so that she could be happy with Rudy. Sylphie replied that she loves Rudy but she is afraid that he won't recognize her anymore and Ariel said that she doesn't have to worry. Then they thought of an idea how they could point out to Rudy that Fitz is his childhood friend Sylphie. Unfortunately, they had no idea and Sylphie told them that Rudy initially thought she was a boy. They were surprised by the story and Ariel came up with a plan. Before she explained the plan to Sylphie, she asked what kind of relationship she wanted to have with Rudy. Sylphie replied that she liked that if a man chokes her and her friends were shocked that she was into hentai stuff. However, Ariel revealed a plan to Sylphie, and she said that she must not lose the courage to confess her love to Rudy. She said that she will do her best, and Ariel wished her friend good luck. In the days that followed, Sylphie looked for Rudy at lunch. He was surprised to see Fitz, and he told Zenoba that he was going out to have a conversation. Then Fitz asked Rudy for a favor, and he immediately agreed without even listening to the favor. So Sylphie began to tell him that Princess Ariel was looking for a special flower in a dangerous place. Rudy planned to help her, and said that he has friends who can get her the flower. The reason for the favor was that Sylphie was planning to go on an adventure with him. In the end, Sylphie managed to convince him to go into the forest with her to collect the flower. The following day they went together into a forest, and Rudy was happy to accompany her. Sylphie asked if she should pay him, but Rudy replied that he didn't need to be paid. Suddenly Sylphie had naughty thoughts and she blushed. Later, Rudy cast a spell that made snow melt and she was impressed by him. Sylphie asked him about his wall, and she learned that he had received it from a young noble woman. So she learned more about Rudy, and she was happy that her plan worked so far. She then activated a spell and planned to change the weather by conjuring up a storm. Rudy said that he can make the rain clouds disappear, and Sylphie tried to prevent his magic. As a result, Rudy couldn't activate a spell and it started to rain. Then Rudy suggested that they take shelter in a cave, and they found a hiding place. Sylphie followed him, and she hoped that her plan would work to win Rudy's heart. Meanwhile, Rudy noticed something was wrong, and he wondered if Fitz cast the rain clouds. Afterwards, he dried his clothes, and he knew that it was wrong to take off his underwear in front of a girl. Rudy noticed that Fitz was shaking, 
but he didn't want to scare her. Rudy said that he knows about the traditions of the elves, and he turned around so she could take off her clothes. Unfortunately, Fitz didn't want to take off her clothes because she decided to reveal her true identity. Rudy didn't know what he should do and she took his hand. Following this, Rudy worried that she was catching a cold, and Sylphie asked him to help her take off her clothes. Rudy began to take off her coat and he opened her shirt. At that moment Fitz's behavior seemed familiar to him, but he continued to remove her clothing. Rudy noticed that this situation seemed familiar, and he thought about his childhood. After Fitz stood in front of him in just his underwear, he said that he should take off her glasses. Rudy asked Fitz if her name was Sylphie, and she hugged him. He was happy to see her, and surprised that she was still a crybaby. Then Sylphie revealed to him that she got a crush on him since childhood, and she wants to be with him forever. A short time later, Rudy was probably shocked by himself because he didn't notice that Fitz was actually Sylphie. He thought it was because Sylphie was a crybaby, and she acted differently as Fitz. However, he remembered the smile that made his heart pound. Rudy decided to reveal his feelings and replied that he loves her too. She was happy, and they kissed in the cave. However, Rudy proved that he still had Riz and he learned that Sylphie is a virgin. He planned to make a hot dog with Sylphie, but his sausage started to cause him problems. So they stopped making love, and Rudy told her about his problem. He was ashamed and apologized to Sylphie, but she wasn't angry. Then she said that he can talk to her casually, and they smiled together. He then thanked her for the necklace and wondered why she was pretending to be a boy. She told Rudy that a lot had happened. Also, she had promised herself that she would become strong to protect him. A few hours later, it stopped raining, and she told him about what happened after the mass teleportation. She said that she had disguised herself as Fitz and was hesitant to reveal her true identity to Rudy because she was afraid he wouldn't recognize her. Then he teased her, and they enjoyed the day together for finding each other again after all this time. Later, she returned to school, and Sylphie said that she got business. Rudy said goodbye, and Sylphie wished she had some medicine to help him. Back at school, Ariel said she feared her plan had failed. Sylphie told her friends about what had happened, and Ariel found it funny that he had problems with his sausage. Meanwhile, Luke understood why Rudy was ashamed, and he felt his pain that he suffered. He said he wanted to help Rudy because he understood a man's pride. Following this, Ariel apologized, and Luke asked if Sylphie planned to cure Rudy's illness. Luke said he will help them and the girls wondered what he was up to. Then we see Zenoba trying to use magic, and Luke went back to the meeting room. He heard that Ariel was trying to give Sylphie advice, but he made a comment that hurt Sylphie's feelings. The reason for this was that he wanted to help her, and he showed her a powerful aphrodisiac. So he explained to the girls that the potion was no longer made because the city of Fitoa was wiped out. Additionally, he gave the aphrodisiac to Sylphie, and warned her, because it could cause a man to lose all his control. Sylphie thanked Luke for his help, and they wished her good luck. Ariel also gave her money so that they could have a nice date. The following evening, Sylphie gathered all her courage and planned to become an adult. Rudy opened the door for her and she entered his room. Suddenly, Sylphie said that she planned to stay in his room for the night, and he was surprised. Then Sylphie was ready to become a woman and she was getting into the mood. So they celebrated their reunion and Sylphie was nervous as she drank booze. Afterwards, he showed her the magical potion, and Sylphie said that it was a cure for his sausage problem. He drank the powerful love potion and he noticed that Sylphie was nervous. Suddenly Sylphie said that she is ready to become an OnlyFans girl, and Rudy smiled by hearing her words. Then she decided to take a drink, and she noticed that her stomach was starting to tingle. She knew she was ready to make a lot of love with Rudy that night, and said she was nervous. Suddenly the potion started to work, and Rudy felt that something was wrong with his body. He apologized for not being able to control himself and started hugging her. The following morning, Rudy woke up in his bed and he was naked. He noticed that he was alone in his room and he realized that he drank a love potion. He wasn't sure if he was being dumped and hoped that Sylphie was just carrying out her duties as the princess's guard. Rudy looked again at the blood in his bed and he felt sad because he thought he was being dumped again. Suddenly, Sylphie appeared and apologized because she had things to do. Rudy was glad that Sylphie hadn't left him. In the afternoon, Rudy introduced himself to Princess Ariel. He thanked them for helping them with his illness. He then said that he didn't plan to interfere in political affairs, but he planned to help Sylphie. Following this, Ariel asked what he intended to do. He replied that he had to search for his family after the mass teleportation. He also decided to marry Sylphie, and Ariel named her Rudy's wife. They support the relationship between the two, and Sylphie said that he should take good care of her. Ariel then said that Sylphie no longer has to disguise herself as a boy, 
and in return she will use Rudy's name to improve her reputation. At the end, Sylphie thanked her friends, and she was happy to become Rudy's wife. <laughs>